have Havertz up top and Georgina in midfield? Uh, I don't know. I quite like the fact that Trossard's starting. He's been very yeah. good so far this year. Although well, might know he's not started for a few. It's funny because as soon as I go live, I've got to post the link on like a thousand places. It's like. <laughs> <coughs> Unbelievable. I'm not happy with ten managers in the world. Well, I've I've got ten, but I just didn't know. It's like yeah. you could put them different ways for. I just don't really. Reasons. I've got some, but I don't really know what to say about like a Serie A manager that I've got on there. Yeah, same. Like, got same yeah, one. no. The thing is, you don't have to <laughs> get them all spot on. Remember, it's just like. Well, he's good because he's done well, but I don't know what his football's like. <laughs> yeah, not watch them all season, but the top of the league. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> yeah. Some of them you'll be able to back, but some yeah. of them it's just like, you just kind of got to say it. It's like that all the time, isn't it? I'm not using my 5G on it because it'll be game over for me. No. All right, lads. We're out here. We're live. It's on public, isn't it, Tim? Not on private. It is. Sick. Nice. Arsenal against Aston Villa, Theo. I can feel the nerves in the room. What's your score prediction? Um, I'm going to say 2-2. Two, 2-2. Two. Two, two. Brad, what are you thinking? I'm going to go Arsenal win. I'm going to go... I'm going to go 3-1 Arsenal. 3-1. Oh, I don't know where to go, me. I have a feeling. I think it's just because I've been watching all the championship teams bottle it at the top. <laughs> I think the Premier League teams are going to do it now. Obviously, Liverpool have just lost, which means this means a massive amount for Arsenal. I'm going to go one all. Just me with Arsenal win then? Yeah. I think people have, like, they're actually a good side, you know what I mean, with a good, good manager, a good coach. So I think people are just used to Arsenal doing an Arsenal, do you know what I mean? So, but yeah, I think they'll beat these. The I can see Villa as well being a bit more focused on on Europe as well. Yeah, I don't know. Arsenal are though. Arsenal have got Bayern Munich again soon. They're just as focused on Europe. This is true. When is it? Yeah. Tuesday? Wednesday? Wednesday, I think. So you would be thinking about this game. Oh, it's everything's so yeah, important. I, man. Just, yeah. I tell you what, the Premier League title race this year is one of the most interesting it's been in a long time. Because although Liverpool have just lost, they're not completely out of it. So that's the thing. All three of them have got in their own rights in terms of Europe, something else to play for. So. It could be a slip up anywhere. Like I know Liverpool got absolutely pumped in midweek, but you won't write them off. Nah, I wouldn't. Even in that European fixture, I still wouldn't write them off. I know mm. it's three 0 but we've seen them do it against Barcelona a couple of years ago, where they pulled back a massive goal deficit. Yeah, but I mean, it's a completely different side. This different mindset. Klopp. I don't know. This Liverpool team doesn't really seem like a team that can come back from a three 0 down. Do you not think? Nah. I think because before can. there was a bit of energy, they were underdogs really in 2019. They'd just really come back into Champions League. Now I think they're just now it's for Klopp's legacy, and I don't really think people are really playing for that much considering they just lost 1 0 to. No, I disagree. I think although it's for Klopp's legacy, I think it still means a hell of a lot to those players. I think the problem is like Salah's dropped off since he came back from injury, he's not really done much. Mm. Like we've seen him today, he missed the chance or two, but he's just not been doing quite as well. So I think maybe that could be the main thing. But we're kicking off. What do you think about Zinchenko starting? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about a Zinchenko? Brief break to thank our sponsor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I said, I said this in the City game. I I think Kivior's better than Zinchenko. I think Zinchenko's all right going forward. Defensively, he's not great. Mm. Play him as a midfielder. I don't like maybe as a as a number eight on the left. He plays there for Ukraine. I don't see why. Well, Arteta he played, don't give he played centre mid for a little while as well, didn't he? Uh, yeah. At City. So I don't see why he didn't get a go there. I just think whenever I see him at the minute, he doesn't look that fantastic. Yeah. But then again. You don't really need to when you've got Gabriel and Saliba there. Yeah, true. It is a pretty good back line. So even if he is defensively, well, not great. We've got no a Villa a Villa long throw in. Ollie Watkins this yeah. season has been... I don't think it's been a surprise for... Oh. oh. I don't think it's been a surprise for most people as such, but I didn't expect him to do quite as well as he's actually done. Who was that? Ollie Watkins. Yeah. Uh, th his output this year has been unbelievable. Do you think that he'll end up staying at Villa next year? I mean, if they get in the Champions League, I think he will, but 
if they end up dropping into Europa League spots, do you not think a bigger team will come in for him? I think, I think I don't know which side, if it's into really in terms of like like your big six. Um, you know, Liverpool have invested massively in Nunes, mm. albeit he's a completely different player. But like my mind instantly thinks Tottenham. You know, anyone sort of like Tony Watkins, I just picture them at Tottenham. Would they want to go Tottenham though? I don't think so. No, this could be me being biased. But like, you still aren't that side anymore. Big six, don't they? Yeah, I think Tottenham maybe isn't the destination. Do you know? I always think of Chelsea, but obviously they're going to have absolutely zero funds this summer by the looks of things. So mm. I don't think he'll be going there. But I just think whenever there's a striker that's doing really well, I see him going to Chelsea and then just flopping. Yeah, <laughs> the Chelsea striker. Well, I, mean, I, I think Watkins is going to come Arsenal. To be honest, Arsenal. I think that is the main position that you're missing. We want either him or Tony by looks things, and I don't particularly want Tony. I think the issue with uh, with Tony, our team's got very nice characters. We're very we we're big focus on team. Tony is a very selfish and individual player. I mean, the way he slugs off Brentford every week. Yeah, I don't really want that in Arsenal. You have got that like a sack a lot. Oh. <laughs> What Jesus did Ben White do there? <laughs> ben White just pings it out of play yeah, for no that, apparent reason. One thing that Arteta seems to have put in place since he came in is like that sort of like tight knit sort yeah. of unit thing, and there's no real individuals. But we also need adaptability. Arteta, he needs players that are willing to listen to him and willing to change and willing to li- to listen to the fact that Arteta's right, mm. individuals aren't. I feel like Tony's just going to play the way he likes and. Yeah, I, to be honest, we spoke about it a couple of weeks ago. We did like the most overrated players in the Prem and you mentioned Tony. Yeah. And I thought, I don't particularly think he's overrated, but I just think that it, a lot of his goals come from penalties or tap-ins. But I think that's the job of a striker. But in a team like Arsenal, where you've already got enough players who can do that, both wingers and Jesus is good enough to do that. I think you need someone who's going to bring something a little bit different. And I think Watkins would bring that over Tony. Yeah, I think he has a lot more to his game. But... In this one. Sick, thanks. Um, Should we get into the first debate of today? And it is the top 10 managers in the world right now. It's quite quite a big one. But uh, it was really hard for me to make this list, you know. I went through and changed it about three or four times in the last 24 hours. So so let's start at number 10. We're doing 10 each, 9 each. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we'll start at number 10. My number 10 is Kieran McKenna at Ipswich. Mm. Top 10? Yeah. Right now in the world, I think, just got promoted from League One. Looks like he's going to get promoted from the Championship with minimal investment, not an amazing squad, and then he'll be a Premier League manager. And I think going straight from League One to the Premier League shouldn't be understated. You've seen Eddie Howe do it at Bournemouth back in the day, and now people look back at that and think, oh, yeah, he's, that run was amazing. I think Kieran McKenna, with what he's done with that team, should yeah. be... That's why he's 10th, top 10. I get where you're coming from, but, like, in a, like, disrespectful way, I think, like, any, like, Championship League One achievements are just, like, disregarded because it's it's world football. You know what I mean? Yeah, but so, I don't disregard it. I don't know. I've, for example, like, you've got... Girona got her in third in the Liga, mm. but... You know, like that for me is is bigger than Kieran McKenna in Championship, which it, it depends on how how you're looking at it, doesn't it? Because obviously, like what he's done at Ipswich is massive, but then when you compare it compare it to like one of the top five leagues, yeah. But I think Championship is top ten well, leagues. Saka tries putting it across for Arsenal, but not much happens. So sorry, it I is know. you're right. It is the most like difficult league probably in the world. But I but think even t- in terms of quality, I think it's top ten leagues in the world. I think it's in the bottom half of that. But other than the ones you think of, Spain, France, Italy, Premier League, maybe Dutch. To some extent, it was like two. Yeah, but then apart from that, I'd say most Championship teams would beat any team in the Turkish league or the Greek league. Or yeah, so I don't, I don't know. I, we're I, it, we're it, last week we were on about this way like. I think it was before we went on the podcast where we were on about like teams that struggle against like your Fenerbahce's in like European qualifying and stuff. Mm. Like, I'm not saying it'd be easy, but yeah. I do I do think that it's up there. But anyway, who's your number ten, boys? Uh, I've got the Sporting Lisbon manager who's only 39 years old. His name's Ruben. I might butcher the pronunciation. Right? <laughs> Ruben Amorim. 
think that's right. Okay. Is he the one that's linked to Liverpool? Yes. So he's looking to take over Klopp. They've lost two games this season, drawn two in the league. About 20 points clear now. Did all right in Europe. They lost to Atalanta in the Europa League, but I mean, so, so have Liverpool. So you can't really knock them too much for that. But, I mean, Yo Keres, he's one of the best strikers in the world right now. Oh, um, he's incredible, isn't he? Yeah. And so, the, I mean, the football from can't say I watch sport week in, week out, but from what I've seen in the Europa League and what I've heard from fans looking on Twitter earlier, they seem to play quite good football. He's, he gives me very Arteta vibe where it's quite progressive football and quite, and going for a sort of pep thing. Yeah. I must admit, I haven't seen much from him, so he's not in my uh, list. Arsenal, oh, Saka's got the ball on the edge of the box here though. Wow. Ooh, Fires it across. It, I don't know he's going to yeah. win that. I don't know why he put so much power on that. Brad, who have you got as the 10th best manager in the world right now? I've got, because when I was thinking about my list, I feel like you can't, because of the summer we've just come from, I feel like you can't disregard him. I've gone for um, Argentina manager, just because he won okay. the World Cup. Yeah. I feel like you yeah. just can't disregard that achievement. It's biggest trophy you can win. So on that like achievement alone and the fixtures post winning the World Cup, going into Copa America, I feel like you can't. Do you know what? I didn't even him. think of him and he's not in my yeah. list, which I'm a bit disappointed yeah. with myself. I, put it, I was going to give him like an honourable mention, but at the same time I thought, well, you've won the World Cup. Like there's no yeah. bigger trophy. Like, but like, obviously any other achievement is week in, week out. Like it's tournament, t tournament, tournament football. So that uh, is yeah, massive. Sc Scaloni, yeah, in number 10. I'll go in at number nine. At number nine, I've got the Inter Milan manager, Inzaghi. So Inzaghi is currently 14 points clear at the top of the Serie A. Um, obviously, Napoli were doing really well and they've dropped off a little bit. But just to be 14 points clear at the top of Serie A is an achievement in itself. I know that Inter Milan have got a really good squad and maybe Italy isn't quite as competitive as it used to be, but there's still a lot of good teams there. That seems low. Because you got to remember, I think you're disregarding the fact he also took Inter Milan to a Champions League final. Yeah, true. Yeah, maybe. Well, we'll, we'll continue. Who's your number <laughs> nine? Uh, I've gone the other side of Milan, the Stefano Pioli, the AC Milan manager. Won the league with them last year. I mean, he's turned some players into like Rafael Leao. He's one mm. of the best wingers in the world. But he's also re like realived a lot of players' careers, such as Giroud, Loftus Cheek. Oh, Giroud! I love Giroud. Yeah, I do. But timeless. He, he's yeah. also timeless goal scorer. Beautiful, beautiful man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one of the best finishers. Of all time. <laughs> but, but yeah, sorry. Carry on. Is the, the defense he's made is very strong with um, Romagnoli and. Tomori a couple of seasons ago, especially Tomori now. I do think I, AC Milan are, what, the second now? 20 points by an Inter. Yeah. But I think he's in the top 10. I don't have him in my list as a spoiler, but I can see why you put him there. Especially winning the league last season. You can't yeah, that is quite impressive. And to be honest, it's quite nice to see both Milan teams actually having a bit yeah. of glory in the last few years because when I was growing up, they were establishments of European football. And then really Italy just turned into Juventus year after yeah. year for a little while. So I'm happy to see Milan's back. Mm -hmm. But Brad, who have you got at number nine? I have got Eddie Howe. Oh. I know, contra oh. controversial. But I just think because it was as of now, and I was, I was still taking into account like what he's done as a whole. So coming, dragged him from relegation, got him into the Champions League. And I feel like he's been a bit unfortunate this season in terms of like how many injuries he's had and stuff. But mm. yet he's still fighting for Obi what is it? I think the 10 points off fourth. So we're not fully out of it, but yeah, practically are. Because at the stage of season, you're pra like just not mathem yeah. mathematically out of it, but um, still in a European spot and still like competitive in a fixture in the league. I know we had like that little patch where, you know, they were absolutely shocking, but. Do you yeah. know what? I'm not actually against the shout. Mm. I considered putting him in mind, but I just think because this season's not gone so well, albeit with the injuries, I just couldn't quite squeeze him in there. Um, but I can see why you've got him in there. I yeah. do quite like it. Yeah. Seems like Arsenal have been on the front foot in this so far. Yeah. Anyway, I'll jump in at number eight, and I think this might be a slightly controversial one, and it's Nagelsmann. He's not in my top ten. Is he no, not? He's not in mine either. But I thought he was unfairly sacked from Bayern Munich. Possibly, but they've got a very high standards. Yeah, but now look at them. Yeah, true. So <laughs> I, I think he was doing a better job with actually a worse squad without Kane than Tuchel is doing now. 
So I, that was an unfair dismissal. And then obviously he's managed to get the Germany job and we'll kind of see how that goes. But I think that based on how he was doing with Bayern Munich and their drop off now, how bad they are at the minute, I think that he needs to be recognised as actually quite a good manager. Yeah. So it always really has been um, like recognised as a good manager. I suppose it'll come down to like what he does in yeah. international football because like, people have that argument don't they're like, oh, well, I could win the league with Bayern Munich, yeah. but... You know, Tuchel's shown this is of it, like it's been a freak season. But um, yeah, he's shown that you can't just walk into a team and storm the league with them. It's it'll, facts. It'll be interesting to see what happens with Germany because, I mean, they've not been good internationally for, what, 10 years now? Mm. Mm. Yeah, if he can make Germany good again. They've got a very good team like Musiala. They've, they've it's got not talent. very good. They've got talent to get... There's some good players, but I, I don't th think They should at least be getting quarters. Yeah, they should. They should, but they've just not clicked for years yeah. after. Since they won, was it the 2010, 20, 2014. 2014 World Cup? They've just not clicked in the same way. But who have you got at number eight, Theo? Uh, number eight, I'd, I'd be interested to see what your two takes on this is, because he might be a bit low. But I've got Xabi Alonso. At, at eight? eight? At eight. At number eight. <laughs> well, I, I yeah. want to know you've got higher. <laughs> I genuinely, because that thing is right. I, I know the question was right now, but I have taken into account longevity. It's been one year of... He's, he's been managing them two years. Does that not get him a bit more credit, though? The fact that he's walked into a team. Yeah, but then I, I know I know he's undefeated. I know I'm talking wrong. He's a very good manager, but I do need to see a bit more from him. I'm not sure what else you can. Yeah, see I about. don't know what more you want to see. I can't lie. <laughs> unbeat, well, unbeaten I don't know, like, like longevity. They've they, already won a trophy, have they? And um, they're in, no, they're, they're, in, in, they're, they're, they're in the, they're in the, the final. They're, they're in the German, German Cup final, practically in the Europa League semi final, and have practically won the league. Uh, yeah. So, bro, he literally uh, can't. I don't know. I just, I just. I don't know. I was doing an R in, but I, I was I was torn whether to put him fourth, but I then I also didn't want recency bias and I don't know. I d it may be a bit low, but I can't change it. Now. I think that that is criminally though. I can't lie. I just I, I, for me, I just need to see a bit more, which obviously you know that'll come with time. I don't know. I think he can be maybe top three in the world. Mm. All right. Well, Brad, who have you got <laughs> <laughs> at number eight? I've got, and it's looking at my list, it's pretty Premier League dominated, but there's a reason behind it because, you know, it is the most luxurious league in the world. But mm -hmm. I've got Unai Emery. Yeah, do yeah. you know what? I'm, I mean, I know there's, like, I tried to keep away from, oh, well, he's fourth because he's top of this league, he's fifth because he's top of this league. But yeah, Unai Emery, you know, I've, like the job he's done at Villa. I've been waiting for him to drop off for ages, you know, sat at, sat at fourth, still in Europe. And yeah, I just think like, you, you know, we've like got a good, I think we've got a good um, board and they're going to invest year on year and mm -hmm. they're only going to get, only going to get stronger. The signings that they make are always pretty smart, you know, like Pau Torres and stuff like that. So I don't know if it'd be seen as weird that me as a Leeds fan actually really quite likes Villa. Same. Well, like, I don't dislike them. I don't, like, I'm not really. Like, no, I'm not like in love with them, but I think they're actually out of the Premier League clubs that are doing well, I've always had a bit of a soft spot for them. And I think it's because there was that period where we were both in the championship and fighting for promotion. And I quite like to see, not particularly an underdog, but one of those feels a bit more gritty. One of those more like yeah. down to earth teams do really like well. Fighting to be in there. Sort exactly. Of I, I get I get the same vibe from like, since West Ham and are doing well. Yeah, and loads like, of people love them. Newcastle. The, the teams that were in the relegation, I know Newcastle's a bit different, but they were in relegation and now they're getting... Now they're fighting for you. I mean, it's teams that at one point were massive as well. Like Newcastle, obviously, have never had a lot of glory trophy-wise, but used to be much better with the likes of Shearer. And then Villa actually did have a lot of glory trophy-wise fucking decades ago now. But it's quite nice to see them doing well again. Um, but I agree with that shout. I'm going to go in at number seven, and it is Diego Simeone at Atletico Madrid. I think his longevity as a manager and... They do spend a little bit of money, but you never really see Atletico putting bags and bags about like Premier League teams mm. or Barcelona or Atletico. And I just think he's such a hard manager to beat. They're constantly getting through to the knockout stages and even the final one time of the Champions League. They're just a, a quality team, Atletico. Mm -hmm. And it's all because of him, all because of his management. Uh, at number seven, I've also got Diego Simeone. <laughs> yes. I just... People give him so much stick for the football he plays, and I know it's boring, but I think if it works, it works. If, if you're winning games, I mean, I've got I, I predicted a few weeks ago he's, he's in my Champions League final. I think I've got Atletico Madrid. Oh, I don't have them in the final, but I can see why you would put him there. I just, I just they're so hard to break down. Havertz and oh, Havertz for Arsenal. Oh, yeah, oh. he held it far too long. Havertz stumbled on it. Was it offside anyway? No, 
Yeah, I think Flag's going to be just stay yeah. with Martinez. Still, they should have done better in the moment. But yeah, I, just, I think Diego Simeone's football is, although it's very boring to watch, it's It's hard. boring to watch, but when you've got a squad like that that's never full of star players that are going to bag loads of goals, you yeah. need to play like that and just nick a goal that's every now and then. It's a results business, isn't it? And sometimes it, it ain't pretty. But I also like him as a character. He's yeah. just a like big shit out, passionate, yeah. passionate. <laughs> passionate. Shit out. Yeah. Brad, who have you got at seven? I've got, I wish I'd have had Simeone now. He's in my <laughs> list and like, you've said everything I could have said. But um, yeah, I've, got, I've got Xavi, which I think to be in the transition at Barcelona, they're in, they're in you know, turmoil in terms of like financially and stuff and they're still competing. I think they're eight or nine points behind Real Madrid now, but they're still competing, still in Europe and they've got such a, a young squad. I think it's a bit, he's more of, Oh, Arsenal oh, again. Poor, poor pass. He's more of um, an underrated manager in some aspects. Yeah, I actually agree. I think since he announced he's leaving, he's been really, really good for Barcelona. Arsenal in the box. Oh. Oh. That's where we need Watkins or Tony. Tim, quickly, will you do us a favour? Will you just turn the telly down a little bit? Because I think it'll probably be coming through on the mics as well when we're talking. Yeah. A little bit more. Yeah, that should be fine. So we're up to number six. My number six is a man we're watching his team play right now, and it's Mikel Arteta. Oh, I was six. Yeah, I think, and we'll come on to this because we've got a debate about yeah. the Arsenal project <laughs> yeah. later. But I think Arteta's quite overrated. Jesus. We'll get on to that more. I won't dive into it more. Theo, who have you got at number six? Um, I'm also watching him. It's Ian Emery. Ah. <laughs> That's what I thought you were going to say. Um, yeah, same reasons you said, Brad. Uh, but also ignoring what he's done at Aston Villa, Villarreal, mm, he, mm. the amount of Europa Leagues he's won or got quite far in. Even at Arsenal, he got us to a Europa League final. I know it didn't really work out. But, but the squad wasn't as good then either. Nowhere near. Yeah, nowhere near. So. But I, I mean, he got us to a Europa League final where Chelsea battered us, but it's fine. Um, but actually, yeah, he's just a very good manager, a journeyman manager. Well, I like him. Brad, who have you got next? We were just talking about him, uh, Simeone. Ah. <laughs> For similar sort of reasons, you know, longevity. And we're all just going to be going like that yeah. now, it, For the <laughs> whole rest of the list. Passing him about. Um, yeah, it's, it's year on year, like, you don't always fancy Atletico to be champions, but you never, you know, discount them either. Like, they're always going to be there or thereabouts, or they're going to have, like, some sort of run in Europe. And I just think, like, like you said, in terms of longevity and... Like how things, you know, our managers swap around in Europe and he's still competitive year on year despite, like you said, not pumping loads of money into it. Yeah, he's, again, just quite quite slept on in a way, pretty underrated, but, um, yeah. I think he's quality. I'm surprised that, I mean, I suppose it's like his club now, isn't it? But I'm still surprised he's never left and give it a go somewhere else. Is there no reason to? I know, but I could imagine him, imagine him at like a Tottenham. I think he'd do incredibly well. Arsenal. Oh, oh. Like that again. I, yeah, I'm like... Like a Tottenham or even like a Chelsea, mm. something like that. Chelsea similar, similar Chelsea, to like, yeah. like get Mourinho vibes. Mourinho, yeah, Sarri or Mourinho or something yeah. like that. I think he'd do incredibly well. I've got a man next who we've all said already up to me, and it's Unai Emery. We've covered it enough. I don't need to say what yeah, else yeah. on the man, but I think I've got him above Arteta because I think he's done better with worse players uh, at both clubs, whether it be Villarreal or Aston Villa. That's why I've I've got him slightly above. Um, Theo, who have you got at number five? Uh, I'm going to change it around. Oh, oh it's going to change. Um, at number five, I'm going to go with Simeone Inzaghi, the ah. Inter Milan manager. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, Inzaghi, I just, he's got one uh, Serie A title, he's going to get another. Oh, yeah, he's, he's practically yeah. won it already. He stopped the trend of Juventus, which I think is a credit to any manager considering they won, what, eight, nine on the box. Juventus were levels above any yeah. other yeah. team in Italy for a little while. It's mental. But I, d I do think people don't credit like I said earlier he got them to a Champions League final mm. he beat AC Milan in the semis both legs battered them I just think he's been there what, two two and a half years now that's that's very good going mm. for quite a young manager as well you can't ask for more really can you yeah. like Champions League final win the league yeah but I've got Inzaghi as well oh. <laughs> so I had him much lower than you lot at yeah night. that surprised me yeah. to be honest I didn't take the con uh, the Champions League into consideration as much as I should have done in this scenario, but I do also think my next picks are all better than him, so I kind of stick okay, with him. Yeah. I was saying, I felt I felt fifth were quite fair based on like yeah. you know like mm. we say Champions League final and then probably going to win the league early with like a million points clear. Oh yeah, he's practically yeah. nailed on to win the league now. Shall I jump in with number four? It is right. the man at Liverpool, 
<laughs> Jurgen Klopp. Why is that bad? I think that's low. Nah, I think that's spot on. Klopp at fourth. I've got Klopp at fourth. When you think about Klopp's time at Liverpool, he has completely revolutionised the club from top to bottom. The position they're in now, in comparison to when he came in, is it's just not even the same club, pretty much. At the same time, though, he's not won as much as he should have done. Mm -hmm. Like, he's won a Champions League and a Premier League and, what, like, won FA Cup or something? Carabao Cup. Yeah, Carabao, Carabao Cup. Cup. But FA Cup as well. It's, it's a fair bit. But at the same Five, time, they lost the Champions League final, they bottled the Premier League. Now it looks like they're potentially bottling another one. We all sat here last week and predicted them to win, and I don't think we would after this week's result. So Klopp's amazing, and I think what he's done there shouldn't be looked down upon, but I also think, is it as good as everyone makes out? You've got quite a few comments there, Joe. Oh, yeah, I know. It's just people saying hello to each other. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, somewhat same reasons you said. Like I've done it more based on, like, Football. This, oh, have you got him at fourth as well? It, I've got him at fourth as oh, well. Nice. Yeah, but again, um, I I, th I think the managers on my list are like having better seasons than him, so that's why he's fourth. But again, you can't disregard what he's done at Liverpool. Like, again, changes like like the full the full team bringing in like players bringing through players, but um, and that's not saying Klopp's bad either. Yeah. Fourth is good. That's like. Top top quality, one of the. So top we're five talking in the world. like out of yeah. your biggest leagues in the world, but like I said, I just think the three managers I've got ahead of him are, are all having better seasons. Who's your fourth there? Uh, at fourth, I've got Mikel Arteta. Ooh. Fourth best manager in the world right now. Yeah, Arteta. He's top of the league in the Premier League with a yeah, really young true. squad. I don't really know. I don't know. I just don't see him been there. I don't see him at that level for some reason. Thing is, right, you've got to realise, last season we had the league in our hands, which you've got to give him credit for. I know we bottled it, but that's... I do, We would have won the league if Saliba didn't get injured. Yeah. Because he's a big part of our team. So he's also got us to the Champions League again. Mm -hmm. We are in, currently in the quarterfinals. Likely to beat Bayern. Obviously debatable, but... Yeah, I think you will. I, I think we will. So let's say this is next week and he's got us into a Champions League semi-final and he's first going in the Champions League. And the style of football he plays, I think it's very Pep esque, but mm -hmm. it is. It's like he, he's got the best. He's built two. the best defense in Europe. Yeah, but is that is a lot of that him? Saliba was there before him, wasn't he? The one that played top league. Yeah, but he, he was on loan at Saint Etienne twice. Yeah, but the, it, it was still an Arsenal signing. I think the setup yeah. around Arteta has allowed him to shine more than Arteta himself has shone. I don't know. I think he's a big part because. It, like we're going earlier, I think, oh, I think the project oh, hev the project heavily relies on Arteta. I don't think there's any other manager unless you're Pep Guardiola who would we who would put Arsenal in the position we're in now, other than Mikel. That's Arteta. the thing. Is like players I, players are playing certain positions like because of Arteta. Like no, I can't see any other manager coming in and playing Ben White at right back. Yeah, it's still be a separate. No, I mean, no like, true, but I think I would rather have Klopp. If, I think if Klopp or Emery had that Arsenal team, they'd do just as well, if not better, than Arteta's done. I disagree. I mean, I don't think Emery would get us in the title contention. Oh, I think he would. And Klopp, maybe. I thought uh, that's too much of a wish in terms of, that's too much of a hypothetical. I have no idea what would happen with Klopp. Okay, okay. We're on to the top three, boys. The top three managers of all, t not all time, all time. of right now. <laughs> Sorry. You've still got Alonso left. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you say Arteta every day? Yeah. What did you have him at? I had him at sixth. Sixth? Yeah. You I said had, him yet? So I had, not yet, not I had Emery yeah. and Klopp above yeah. him. He's not in my list. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, You're about to hit me. <laughs> I'll, I'll go in at number three. And the third best manager in the world right now for me is Carlo Ancelotti. Okay. I think he's just consistently been so good for years. He's got Real Madrid at the top of the La Liga again. He's got him in the Champions League semi-final, drawing against City again and he's just done so well with him it was a tough job to take over from Zidane Real Madrid fans loved him three Champions Leagues in a row but he's brought them back to that stability in the league and I just think for years he's just he's been a top quality manager wherever he's been he's done it in the Premier League he's done it in La Liga he's done it in Syria he's just got to be up there Theo number three uh my number three I've got Jurgen Klopp okay he's in my top three um once again, you said everything. He has fallen off in recent years, but I think that's also because, you know, aging Liverpool team, a lot of their best players left. Mane left, Firmino left. Mm. Who, I mean, they were no longer in their prime. Um, but I still think he's one of the best managers in the world. It'll be interesting to see what he does now, yeah. whether he goes. Bayern seems open for him, but 
I don't think he'd ever go buy it after being at Dortmund. No, he seems like he has morals against doing mm. something like that. But on paper, German managers done really well buying Munich jobs free. Not only that's not a cop out, but I think after his career that he's had, you know, like gone to Liverpool, long term project, brought through so many players, similar sort of thing at Dortmund. I can see him wanting a bigger cha- wanting a bigger challenge. Like for me, like I don't discount him like taking a break and waiting out for Germany job. I would yeah. I would much prefer for Klopp to wait, get the Germany job than go to Bayern Munich because I think A, he's got such a good relationship with those Dortmund fans at the minute. He shouldn't yeah. ruin that. And also I think if he went to Bayern Munich and won stuff, everyone would just go, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It wouldn't be much of an achievement, whereas what he's done at Liverpool is, what he did at Dortmund is, so yeah, I hope he works for the Germany I'd job. like to see him at like a Leipzig though, because Leipzig have always been in and around it. I don't think he'd go there because of the connotations around the club. Yeah. Because everyone says that it's just like a money grab and it's just like a Red Bull project. Yeah. yeah. I don't think that would be the type of club that he'd be interested in. I agree though, but... Like a top, like a, or even like a... Um, maybe someone in Italy, maybe like a, a Napoli or... Yeah, but I think he wants to stay in Germany. That's, that's mm. the issue. I don't know. I have no idea who else he could go to in Germany. But, Brad, who have you got as your third best manager? Uh, Alonso. Alonso? Alonso. I've, I've got him quite high, purely based on... <laughs> it feels like shaking his head. But, um, <laughs> yeah, j- purely based on, like, if you'd have said, how do you reckon Alonso will get on at the start of the season? Somebody might have said, what, quarterfinals? Europe, yeah. but no one, I probably wouldn't have even said that. Like, it's, it's, it's not just a fact of, like, you know, they're going to win the league, most likely going to win the cup. Get younger doing well in Europe. It's the fact that the style they're doing it in, you know, they're playing like such good football mm. and you go unbeaten. It's like, mad, isn't n- it? No, no one's managed to beat them. Like, if they do that for the whole season, everyone's going to lose their minds. Mm-hmm. That, that would be one of the biggest achievements in football history. I mean, he, he's two games away from breaking the record for the most games in a row. Is he really? Yeah. Wow. He, the record's 43, they're at 42. Yeah, that shouldn't be looked down upon at all. I do I regret th- not putting him a bit higher, but <laughs> I didn't think. I've got well, with hands on. Like you, you mentioned Ancelotti. You know me. Yeah, I didn't put him on my list based just based. It were more. Is is more? It's more like heritage. I'm not saying he's not one of the best managers <laughs> in the world, yeah. but I wanted to keep it open to managers that have done stuff. I won't expect. Like, I expect Ancelotti to do well. At Real I Madrid. wouldn't say he's more heritage though when they're still top of the league right now. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. Like I'd expect Ancelotti to have Real Madrid at top of the league. Like I'm yeah. not. I'm not, I'm not shocked. Yeah, but, but then I'd that. say you'd you'd expect Pep Guardiola to do really well with Man City because he's a really good manager. But does that de- discredit him being a good manager? Then because you expect it. Not really. But I feel like I, c- I feel like I can I can justify saying you know sitting Ancelotti down and going listen you are class but look, the summer days I just want to give <laughs> give a mention to you, you know what I mean like I could have easily uh, got rid of um, like Scaloni who's won World Cup just to put Ancelotti in yeah. but it's a case of like. I'm not. No, I know what you, you know mean. What I mean. And I think Ancelotti doesn't play particularly thrilling football all the time that's going to get you out of your seat as well. He, like, he's good. He's quality, consistently okay. But I know why you wouldn't include him. Yeah. Number two? Uh, my number two is Ancelotti. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's he's got the most Champions Leagues out of any manager of all, ever, mm. with four. He's managed the likes of Bars, uh, not Bars, Real Madrid, AC Milan, Chelsea, Real Madrid... Everton. <laughs> um, that is mentally. <laughs> it's all to well. Yeah. Um, it's like Rafa Benitez just going to Everton. Yeah. For <laughs> but I j- to have that many Champions Leagues and do that consistently. Yeah, I'm surprised. You- I was expecting him to be in there for yeah. you still. No, that's the thing. Like, I, I, I could have had him in, but like I say, like, I could have easily took, you know, Sim- Simeone mm-hmm. out, but it's a case of like, Ancelotti is such a good manager that I, I know that don't make sense. Like, he's such a good manager that I've not put him in. Does that make sense? Does that? I know. Make, that I, know make, I know what yeah, angle you're coming from. To not put him in at all. I get why the argument if you were to put him at eighth, but yeah. then I'm because I'm, I've, I've done it based on like what what they're achieving. I like, think it's I, because it's right now as well, and because yeah, he's been here for so long. It's I know what you mean. It's it, nothing it's, new. It's, it's nothing so exciting. Current, it's but, not, it, and I'm not discrediting anything. It's just a case of like I wanted to put people in who like who are even new, newer managers, younger managers, or like overachieving like for me if, if Real Madrid went on to win La Liga and Champions League I wouldn't be you know, oh falling over at, you know, I think it's like also because be it's Real Madrid though yeah. because it's Real Madrid like when we mentioned Klopp and, uh, Arte- and Arteta at Arsenal and Emery at Villa it's because they've made those clubs something new something fresh again Real Madrid never really dropped off yeah. under Zidane they did w- worse in the league but they were still winning the Champions League yeah, so back to back to back exactly so I so just 
I think I think what you're forgetting is in his first run, which was what twenty fourteen. Mm. Modric, Cruz, Modric wouldn't be a Ballon d'Or winner. All these players, even Bellingham now, they would not be the players they are if it wasn't Fancho. And I fully, I fully get that, and like, that's why I'm saying I'm not, I'm not discrediting like what he's done. But we're talking about like right now. I feel like I can like give it a miss yeah. right now because like I'm, I'm not shocked. Anyway, I'm I know it. I know it sounds weird that he's not in there, but it's just because like we had ten. If we'd have been doing fifteen, twenty, like obviously he'd have been in there, but. You know, d- it is slightly criminal. I can't I back died. it fully, it, but I'll I give that's worse than Alonso. Eh? I, I'll give my number two, and my number two is Guardiola. So who's got a one? Alonso. I can't think who's got a one. Yeah, Alonso. But should I just give my? I mean, Guardiola speaks yeah. for himself. My number one is Alonso. He is the best manager in the world right now. He came into a team that wasn't. It had never won a Bundesliga. Never mm. took them to new heights that haven't been seen in well in that club's history. Winning the league, probably going to at least get to the final of the Europa League, if not potentially win that. He could go a full season unbeaten, win the German Cup, league, and Europa League. How can he not be at number one? He doesn't even have a particularly good squad. He's made that team under his style of play to do this well. I get it. I really do get it. But I think recency bias. I, I, I would have. Much. I would have had him. No, but that's why. Like I'm saying, right now. Right now, Guardiola has built the City team for five years. You would expect it to be ticking along as it is. He has done that in, what, a year and a half? That I is unseen. Get it. And the reason, the reason he isn't my number one is because, like, yeah, fine, you know, Bundesliga, but it's the German Cup and it's also Europa League. If it, if it could have been in Champions League, it, I'd have had him as a shout for, like, for my number one spot as well. But, like, the two I've got above him are, you know, in... A title race in, you know, supposedly the, the hardest league in the world and Champions League. Go on then, Brad. Who's your second and first? Arteta. Arteta second? I've got second. Arteta second, yeah. Have you got him second? I had him fifth. Oh, shit, yeah. I'm fourth. I, 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 I'm fourth. I don't get the Arteta love me. I really don't. Thank you, Brad. It's, it's purely, purely because, like, if we win, the, as of now, if we win this today, the top of the league, going to the mm. Champions League... You know, like they're competing on all fronts once but again. But the second best manager in the world right now. As, Do you not? Like, right now? I think if any manager in my top ten here was the Arsenal manager with the squad they've got and the amount they've spent, I think that they'd be doing close to how they're doing now. I don't, I don't like that narrative on like how much they spent though. Like, what were Rice eighty million? Rice were eighty million 100. because hundred yeah. million. Fair enough. Like they were Rice were hundred million because West Ham said we want hundred million for him. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. you have to pay what clubs want. I don't always like, oh, I've spent this much, but that doesn't mean they've got an amazing team. Look at Chelsea. But th- you've you also got to I mean? realise, with Arteta being Arteta, it's not like we just spent a hundred million on a flashy player. We no, were, I think the recruitment's been signing. Us. Like the recruitment has been exactly what it needed to be, and has been smarter than any other top club in the last few years. And that's why you're doing so well. But it's still a large amount of money that's been spent, and I do think that. I, te- I don't think just if, if it was Ancelotti, Klopp, Emery, maybe not Simeone, Xabi Alonso, I think if any of them were at Arsenal right now, they'd be doing a similar thing. And if they weren't with this squad, everyone would be saying it's criminal. It's all hypothetical. Or like on paper, like got on the names alone, you don't, you know, based on like play for play, you don't put many Arsenal players in the City team at all. But like they're up there, they're competing, they're pushing them, and they're gonna be. Well, if going today, they're gonna be top at league. Like he's mm. got, he's got. This thing, it won't just a fluke last season. Yeah, they had it in their hands and all bit yeah. messed it up. Like he's, he's fully competing with, you know, Man City, and it, we could be entering like depending on how, how long Guardiola stays, we could be entering like a Guardiola and Arteta sort mm, of area. True, true. So I don't like. I don't dislike him. He was in my list. I, I just wouldn't have him second. But can, can I use your logic against you? Yeah. Though? Your whole thing is right now. With Alonso being first, it's right now. Mm. Arteta's doing better than Klopp and Pep. Yeah, true, but Klopp's, also... Klopp's lost 3-0 in the Europa League. Third in the Premier League. Is Arteta doing Pep. better than Pep, really? He is by like a point. He's above him? By and they point, both drew bro. their games in the Champions I mean, League. Right now, if is we're going to get him. picky... No, but it is by a point. I wouldn't say that that's like a big put, differential. Okay, but that's is that is that worth a four place what, gap? What, what do you think? Oh, when you say like right now, because like to me right now it just means like this season. Yeah, I mean like, it means I'm, this season. We're not yeah, talking not. like this week. Yeah, oh, right. and also your argument could have been made better if you said, well, I've got Emery above him. But again, it's because yeah. I think that he's doing better with a much worse squad. It's obviously he's above him right now. You've got one of the best teams ever built. You've literally got the best defensive mid in world football. Two of the most exciting wingers. 
There's strikers. Rodger, there. Rodger play for Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> it is close though, isn't it? It, it is. I don't think. I think my. I think my definition of right now is very different to yours too. My definition of right now, and obviously, is, I don't know. It's the last sort of two, three seasons, taking everything into account. Right, I've gone like like on this Today. season. That's that's why like it were. It, it didn't feel as criminal to leave Ancelotti out because like, I expect you to win. <laughs> Every time you say I that, Theo yeah. looks at you that's like, just, what the that's thing, I've not I've not left him out because he do not get in the top yeah. 10. I've left him out because it's more so obvious. But again, you obviously guess what my number one is. But like, I could have done the same with him. But So why is your number one Guardiola? Read my mind. <laughs> just, just based on, you know, it's back, potentially back-to-back trebles. Mm. And it's just it's just... Guardiola, like the man is a freak. Like he's got a meticulous way about training his teams. Like it depends on like how much of a team you watch. Like we all watch like each team play, but like obviously some teams have released documentaries and you watch just how he is on the training ground and stuff. Like mm. the man is an absolute psychopath when it comes to football. And yeah, I, I don't think there is any other better manager in, in in the world. It is true. His style of play completely revolu- revolutionized football straight from his Barcelona days and. People have tried to implement it, and obviously Arteta is very similar. But other other managers are consistently try and have similar styles of play. But he is the master at it. You, oh. can, oh, you can't you can't bring you can bring money into it to some extent. Like I know he's always had, excuse me, an open checkbook. But at the same time, like one sec, you can't discredit a manager because he had good resources. Yeah, true. It's not his fault that he's got millions to work with. If you've got he millions, has, to work, he's he has use had them. it. He has had the glory of resources to a, a level that's been unseen consistently throughout different teams, though. Because look at that fucking Barcelona team when he was there. It yeah. is literally mm. the best team of the last twenty years, pretty much. In my time, yeah, it is. Without a doubt, it is incredible. And then you look at this City team now, where they didn't even really need Haaland to continue like going on that trajectory and doing as well as they were, but they did. So that's why Guardiola's in second for me, and I've got uh, Alonso in first. But Theo, who's your second and first? Um, Can't even remember. Uh, my number two is Ancelotti. Yeah, I. Oh yeah, yeah. Ancelotti. Um, I think he should. Yeah, he deserves yeah. it. And then my number one is Pep Guardiola. Wow, I'm surprised an Arsenal fan admitting that. I got one. I mean, Arteta is the regen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Arteta is just Guardiola 2.0. I mean, I'm, do I sit here and say Arteta will surpass him? He's quite young. He's only 41. Oh, Ollie Watkins in the box for Aston Villa. Oh, oh, oh he's oh, in the post. Oh my. <laughs> that was a close call. Ollie Watkins nearly bagging there. It nearly went in as well. It curled round the opposite post, which is a strange thing to see. Aston Villa haven't really challenged much this half as well, so it's a bit wild to see that. But, lads, can we just go over and list our full top 10 from top to bottom? I'm going to do it first. So, my top 10... Oh, I'm going to wait for this Arsenal chance, actually, first. Jesus. Oh. Go on, Odegaard. Odegaard. Is he Jesus still? again. Upside. Oh, oh, my God, what a save. A save. An amazing save from Martinez from an Odegaard shot, I think it was. Yeah. It's been end-to-end. Villa nearly score, and then Arsenal go up to the other end and nearly bag. It's the rebound that was mental. Yeah, from Trossard. Oh, as if he's oh, all right. right. He save. needs to score that, though. I know it's a right save, but when you look back at this game, that's got to go in. And so, It's not a bad miss. <laughs> no, it's not. Anyway, my... Oh, have you seen what that Watkins chance came, came from? No, what was He's it? He's played it onto Zinchenko's back. Yeah, Gabriel's oh. tried clearing <laughs> it into Zinchenko. That's close, that, isn't it? Uh, that's that's the difference between us and the Premier League, though. Yeah, fine margins. Ooh. Yeah, every team needs a bit of luck. I'll so. tell you what, this has been more entertaining than the City game already, <laughs> and there's not even been a goal. Right, I'll give my top 10 managers in the world right now. 10th is Kieran McKenna. 9th is Inzaghi. Eighth is Nagelsmann. Seventh is Simeone. Sixth is Arteta. Fifth is Emery. Fourth is Klopp. Third is Ancelotti. Second, Pep Guardiola. And first is Xabi Alonso. Kieran McKenna. Kieran McKenna. He's so out of place. does it sound when you hear that name? He's so out of place. I think that it's he's valid to be in there. He's completely deserved of a spot in the top 10 based on what he's done. Honestly, I think people underestimate. Like, you'll know, obviously, Brad. I mean, both of you will know. Saka. Oh. Saka, oh, Saka just right. ran the post. Both of you will know, but 
the English football leagues are so tough to get out of. And to get out of Ipswich are not particularly amazing in any sense. No offence to Ipswich fans, but they don't have a great stadium. They don't. They didn't used to sell out up to this, this season. To get them from League One to the top of the Championship, when Southampton are down there with practically a Premier League squad still, they didn't really let go of anyone. Leicester have got an unbelievable team. Leeds have got about a £200 million squad. We're playing a 35 mid... £35 million pound centre attack in mid every game. Mm. The fact that they're up there is just not on. He deserves that spot. I'll hear no hate for Kieran McKenna in the I'd list. Like There's no hate, but I just think... Oh, it's so hard because you sound ignorant to like the AFL, but in terms of like what any other managers achieve in like Champions League, even Europa League or Conference League, it, it kind of trumps being second or third in, in Championship. I get it's amazing. But, but you can only do as well as where you are. That's why I have Xabi Alonso first, because he can only do what he can do at his club, and he's doing it to the, a top, top level. Like he can't do any better. Kieran McKenna can't really do any better. Uh, yeah, but I also wouldn't say Kieran McKenna, McKenna's much better than... Arsenal? Oh, he's got away from him. Oh, it's a poor ball from... I, I wouldn't say Kieran McKenna's much better than Rob Edwards from um, Luton, who did a very similar thing. No, Rob Edwards is good as well, but I think... They ended up in the playoffs. They didn't get automatics. They didn't do it season after season, coming up straight from League One, then to get promoted to the Premier League. They had a couple of years in the Championship. So it's a different thing altogether. Like If he if he gets back-to-back promotions, I'd probably put him even higher. Genuinely, it's, it is so rare that that happens. And you look at Eddie Howe now. You had him in your list. This is just mm-hmm. like what Eddie Howe did, but it's happening right now. It's in a compl- like Eddie Howe... Beating Tottenham four 0 is more impressive than Ipswich getting a last minute winner against like a Bristol yeah. though. No, like, but it's, it's, a not. it's a different like, even the league. Like I get, I get it's not in terms of achievement, but in terms of like what you're up against. Yeah, but Eddie Howe's only getting four 0 wins against Tottenham now because Newcastle are at such a good level and they've built up to this point but because I, of him though as well. I'd argue it's it's a bigger accomplishment. I know maybe not, but Ipswich being finishing where they are now. I'd say it's more impressive what I- Iriola's done at Bournemouth. But currently, they currently sat 10th. Nah. Mm. I, th- I think so. I think they were relegation. No, nah, I think that's good, but not as good as two back-to-back promotions if that happens. Right. Arsenal, Havertz. Oh, no one there. Oh. I don't know why Saka's just sat on the edge. Where you want your Watkins or your Tony? Yeah, like you keep absolutely. mentioning. <laughs> but um, do you want to read out your full top 10, Theo? So my top 10 list at number 10, I've got Ruben Amarim. Uh, number nine, I've got Stefano Pioli. At number eight, I've got Shabby Alonso. At number seven, I've got Simeone. Uh, at number six is Unai Emery. At number five is Simeone Inzaghi. At number four is Mikel Arteta. At number three, Jurgen Klopp. Number two is Ancelotti. And number one is Pep Guardiola. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty good. Is is he called Simeone Inzaghi? Because when you said that originally, when we first did the list, I thought you were saying Simeone I've, slash Inzaghi. Yeah. Like you couldn't make your mind yeah, up. Because no, you said you were going to change it round a bit as well. Because when you no, yeah, that's why I was Simeone Inzaghi. Inzaghi. All right, that's I was name. blagged. Oh, oh, that's a foul. Oh. I think it's just outside the box yeah, though, but a very good position for an Aston Villa free kick here. Brad, do you want to read your full top 10 managers in the world? Right now. Right, my top 10 in the world right now. Uh, Lionel Scaloni from Argentina. Um, Eddie Al in ninth. In eighth, Unai Emery. In seventh, Xavi from Barcelona. In sixth, uh, Diego Simeone. Fifth, Inzaghi from Inter. Fourth, Klopp. Third, Alonso. Second, Arte. And first, Pep Guardiola. Nice. Yeah. Well, the no Ancelotti is still is I think weird. It's criminal Do you ha- think it's weirder it's for me to have Kieran McKenna or Brad to not have it's Ancelotti? Not Ancelotti. Uh-huh. It's, it's, I, 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 I hope you, I hope you understand where I'm, I hope you six. understand where I'm coming from. Be, because only because he's such a young manager. You know what I mean? Like I'm, go, I'm going on like. I don't know. Are you saying that? Like, like, I know you're saying that Ancelotti is more not, legacy. By not being in there, I'm saying Xavi is a better manager than Ancelotti right now. But it's a, it's a case of like I wanted to give credit to like younger managers and stuff like yeah. you know that, that's the reason he's not in there like like he, for me if we're gonna do like a top 10 managers of all time he goes in there and he goes in there high yeah true you know what i mean like i've left him out just because i can because it's right now. i think we'll do top 10 managers of all time soon but i think half of them would probably be the same people 
Yeah, a lot of them would. I think like anyone in your top five is gonna be yeah. in your top ten. Or I did the bit I just dis uh Sis McGinn. Uh didn't you? Bogs things it would take or Telemund. Nobody's Aston Villa with a free kick on the edge of the box. I can see like a crossbar in in. Can they do something after Arsenal? I've had a pretty good half overall, to be honest. So, oh, oh well straight in. into the well, wall. Well, free kick. But the, the bit that I can't comprehend is Xavi's currently leaving Barcelona because he, he didn't do great. He's doing well now, now that he's mm-hmm. said he's leaving. But at the end of the day, he's not going to be at Barcelona next season because he's not been good enough. Mm. To put him sixth and not have Ancelotti in. A manager that's currently leaving his club because he wasn't good enough. Yeah, when you put it, when you put it like that, obviously it sounds criminal. But like I, like I said, like the reason he's not in there is because again he's such a good manager. But I could use that logic yeah. with Pep. Yeah. Like, but he's Premier League, Champions League. It's, it, I, I'm glad you understand where yeah, I'm coming from. I do but know it where is, you're coming from. It is a stinker, but yeah, <laughs> like like I said, I wanted to give like like credit to what's worse, like younger manager. You having Alonso at eight or him not having Ancelotti at all? Alonso at eight is <laughs> fucked, bro. Alonso is much better than the Considering eight the fact that like the reason he's there is because I need to see more from him. Yeah, well, <laughs> I had Alonso at first, though. Did you have any honourable mentions? Anyone that nearly made the list that you wanted to bring up? I'm sure <laughs> <laughs> I think the the biggest, the two for me is uh, the Argentinian manager. Yeah, I should have said him, actually. I didn't think of him. And Iraola, the Bournemouth manager. Do you like him? I, I think I very much do. He's we all were, right. We were in for him, weren't we? Yeah, Leeds looked at him at one bit, but I don't well, know. Bournemouth are very good. Bournemouth are doing very well this season, but I also think it's a perfect storm. You've got Solanke actually doing really well for once. Yeah. So I, if he doesn't keep it up, they'd be fucked. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't like Bournemouth really as a club. I think they're boring and just dilute the Premier League. Yeah, it goes, They're never going to do They're not anything. a Premier League team anyway. No, yeah. it goes back to, like, you can have, you know... You can change owners, you can change stadiums, you can even get to Europa League. But like, I'm so traditionalist in terms of Premier League, like Bournemouth shouldn't be in there, but yet yeah. Portsmouth down in League One should. <laughs> yeah, you know it's I mean? weird like, how it yeah. works, isn't it? Fucking Portsmouth. I remember then we saw Campbell. Aston Villa. Oh, Villa with a, a half-decent chance to end the first half. Theo, what's your thoughts on that first half? Good, promising. We've had a few chances, but like Brad said to me earlier, this is where we need a, a Watkins, a Tony, someone who's going to just finish these chances. That, yeah. I'm sick and tired of watching us where it's like, it, it, it's a bit um, weird considering we've had loads of games this season where we've won 5 6 nil, mm. But we need to be scoring more. It's it's weird. Yeah, well, I think that that run of games up to, it was a few, a few games ago yeah. that really ended, wasn't it? And then the last couple haven't been quite as exciting. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, su- I suppose the Villa are a very good team. I wouldn't expect you to pepper them. Yeah, but we've had three clear cut chances now. I know they hit the post once, but yes, I think that's been pretty good chances. That Martinez save. Martinez, yeah. He's wish a never, I wish we never got rid of him, honestly. Do you? Absolutely. Would you take him over Raya or yeah. Ramsdale? Yeah. Ooh. I think at the time it made sense for him to leave. So I'm mm. not, because he was at the club 10 years. He finally got a bit of a run, but it still wasn't enough to keep him at the club. He's definitely mm. better than Ramsdale. I yeah, than and Ramsdale. I, I just... The bit I prefer about Ram, I, I, prefer, I think Rise a better keeper than Ramsdale, but I like Ramsdale because of his personality. Yeah, his passion. Martinelli, uh, Martinez has got the personality and he's got the goalkeeping. Yeah. So for me, I just think. I, I would prefer. That bit of edge. I'd prefer to have him over Raya or Ramsdale as well, to be fair. I think mm. he's a, a better in every aspect, but yeah, Arsenal have been a bit unlucky because Ramsdale looked quality at first and then just dropped off massively very quickly. But. Should we jump into another debate? What should we do next? Do you know what? That manager <laughs> that manager list lasted. I think that'll be one of the longest minutes, fucking yeah, debates we've minutes. ever done. Um, let's talk about oil money or money in football in general. Do you think that the amount of money that's come in from some of these states, some of these oil companies or countries even at this point is having a detrimental impact on English football? Brad, we'll start with you. I think in some aspects, yeah, but... At the same time, though, I think, like, the fault lies with, you know, your establishment, so, like, your Premier League having such, like, like r- rules with so many grey areas, and also, um, just, it's not really a level playing field. Like, the rules are in place in a way that it kind of favours, 
you know, your, your, your top six. So it's kind of like, it allows for it, but like doesn't still make it fair. You know, if you had things, you know, like like salary caps and for certain ages and stuff like that, they could make it such a bigger like level playing field, but mm. it's not like teams are able to just come in and, you know, bankroll, s- splash cash, trophies. as long as you can offset your books. Like you look at like what Chelsea have done this uh, mm. this week where they've sold um, some of their hotels to another one of top bowlers' companies and yeah. that gets written off. You know, it's so, mental, isn't it? So it just, it's just it's clear the corruption. rules that are unfair, yeah. Theo, what do you think? Uh, it's probably an unpopular opinion, but I'm in favour of oil money. Top six fan. <laughs> it's top, top six all we're over. not we're not an oil money club. I know you're not, but you're up there. Like I'm, I'm saying that from the point of view as like if if Leeds go up, I think what what do we do? And do we get eight? i conference. I'm league? looking at this. My point from a how good it is, not necessarily for smaller clubs or even for the club directly. I'm saying oil money brings so much financial gain for England and football as a whole. We get far more more viewership from the Qatar World Cup. From yeah, I, I get the arguments. Obviously, the richer, richer, the poor, poorer. Um, but I think if if I'm excluding, well, I'll go into it. But if I'm excluding how it affects the big six in general, obviously it makes Man City unbelievable. Mm. If I'm excluding that, the the stuff oil money done has done for. The UK is unreal. Yeah, but you're just looking at it from more of a, a business standpoint in terms of like, look at what's yeah. happened around the Etihad and the developments around the stadium and that, stuff and that's who what's going to happen. Huh? That's who I am. I like it. Well, yeah, true. But also like what's going to happen in Newcastle. But by that, overall, right, the, the, develops, the developments around the Etihad are great, right? And it makes the city a better place. But does it when ticket prices keep going up and there's more seats allocated in the stadium for tourist fans or, or different experiences, which means everyday people can't go as much or can't afford to go as much. Like, they're doing nice things in some ways, but in other ways, not at all. Yeah, but I, th- I think... More hospitality seats isn't a benefit for Manchester City fans. It's a benefit for the financials of the club and the local area when someone comes over and watches a game and they spend a bit of money on food and on travel and whatever, whatever. But it's not a benefit for the, the, the core fans of the football club. I get that, and I, I do agree. I think football should be for the fans, absolutely. Um, but I can, I've also got to realise from the perspective of a businessman, like if you, if you're only Man City, if if you're getting told you can earn hundreds of thousands of pounds more a season, you're going to take that opportunity. Yeah, I mean, I get why footballers it's, would play there, but it's a case of how how it kills football though like you look at where it's come from and where it is now ju- just in my time and like where it's going to go like at what point do you stop and think oh, oh shit what about the game mm. like what about football you know like you say oh we're building up all this you know this whole village around and there's going to be food and you know cheerleaders and fireworks and what about the game of football you know what i mean like like the atmosphere as as a match day goer like if every like even birmingham are looking to you know get this like new stadium it's going to cost three billion pound or whatever it is like it's a case of how far do you go to be the the best experience it's going to become where it's all about the experience and then yeah. what about you know the, the match on the pitch and i think that's going to get lost also on my last point about fans because people will go for the overall experience and it's not going to be people who want to go week in week out and that's what football at the end of the day is built on even if it's just people who watch it every week if it's just people who want to kind of be involved when someone's winning some up when everything's mm-hmm. looking flashy and new it it'll lose some of its magic like especially when you look down the football pyramid and i think this is one of the biggest things that worries me if if you're a kid growing up today it must be so hard when you see every season arsenal manchester united manchester yeah. city chelsea spending two three hundred million on players and your club's what getting five thousand fans a week at the bottom of league one yeah. you're never going to choose to support that team and the English football pyramid, they say, oh, well, the other team's going to get more investment and end up with better TV deals and, you know, players go on loan. And there is some benefits, but there isn't if there's no one new support in those clubs because yeah. the other clubs are just blowing everyone out of the water. Even the bottom half Premier League clubs, like I'd imagine a lot of kids now that grow up in London and would have supported a Fulham or a Palace, unless the parents are like really on them, they probably will end up just supporting Arsenal or Chelsea. Yeah. A great point. J- just out of curiosity, you two both have season tickets at Leeds. Not a season ticket, no, yeah, but season I got very often, very often, yeah. How much do you spend for a season ticket each year? 
Uh, well, this year it was about 800 quid. 800 quid. So at Arsenal, it's 1,200. Mm. So if I said to you, are you willing to spend another 400 quid? But at that point, Leeds are a Champions League team who are fighting for the title. And would you spend 400 quid more to watch that? Yeah, I would. But my point is, because they're at that level and they're getting all that money, better TV deals, better um, trophy money when they win a trophy, better competition money, why would I? Like, from a club point of view, they make fuck all off-season ticket yeah. holders. Think about mm. it. Even if, out of what, is the Emirates probably, what, like 30k season ticket holders? At yeah, £1,200 a season ticket, that's fuck all. Yeah. I think that's done and dusted at the beginning of the season. Yeah. It's what you earn, like, week on week, month on month. Yeah. Like, the regular match day goes, like, it's not, it, we're, we're looking at it as well from, like, like the business and like growth of a club but for me it's like the perfect point that you touched on joy is like what it does to people coming into the game like how many clubs like are going to die off in the future from like look at like yeah london's got the perfect example you've got like arsenal chelsea tottenham whatever like west ham big west ham like there's no incentive for a kid to Go support like a QPR, like a Leighton Orient or <laughs> yeah. something. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's like you said. Unless your parents are fully in there, and like no, no, we're Orient, we're an Orient family. Like there's no incentive, especially with how football's marketed today. Like you can't yeah, buy a can of Pepsi without seeing Haaland on front of it and stuff. Like this, this whole like top six thing is because of all these deals and stuff is is shoved down your throat. And then my other issue with it is, and I think this is where it comes to the core of it. Those top six clubs have got a stranglehold on the Premier League and the new rules that get introduced, etc., and can just find loopholes around FFP, whatever. So it's like now, I have no doubt in my head, maybe one team will come in and break through for a couple of years like Villa are doing at the minute, but I have no doubt in my head that in another 10 years, it's going to be the same big six without question. Like it's mm. what is it? Are we, so now is it just like forever because they've got money from the companies that own them and they've got a stranglehold on the Premier League and the rules and can practically do whatever they want and they just agree to vote on the same things. So is that it now? Like is that always because if you're then as you said coming into football, you're seeing them everywhere, every bus, every fucking TV advert on a Cadbury's chocolate bar. You've got the Premier League team cover a FIFA every year, but, and, but you don't. Yeah. There's nothing. Fifteen years ago, it wasn't as bad as that because the teams didn't put as much money into marketing to try get those new fans because they know their lifetime value is going to be worth it for the marketing. So no one's going to support the local. Just out of curiosity then, um, what's the solution? If you guys are saying we, it's going to stop like new fans supporting locals, mm. what what do you guys suggest we do then? I think in, in, in terms of... In terms of oil, money, and football, I think you know. In terms of building up your ground, your infrastructure all around the ground and stuff like I, that, should be limitless. You should want to grow, grow the club. To I, th I think I think we have such like strong, passionate feelings on it because you know we we lead and like yeah. on, in terms of like comparing them to Liverpool, Man United, City, top Tottenham to some extent, like these you know big, massive, global um, <laughs> institutions that are go going to Asia and not all this stuff. It's it's more passionate because it's like well just support you, support your club you know what I mean but like if there was some sort of cap in football in terms of like when it comes to playing stuff you know like sal salary caps like an actual sp an actual spend amount that goes on how much you've made you know like, and it's that would help but at the moment it's a case of like buying the best players oh, I'm gonna support them I think for me at the minute it seems like financial fair play doesn't exist. There isn't a, there isn't a fair yeah. playing field mm. for all the teams. And I'm just talking about in the Premier League. Also, the Sky deals, which is where the majority of the yeah. money comes from, and TV deals, for the Premier League and Championship, or even down to League 1 and 2, should be based on viewing figures per, per game. So if a club is trying to build the fan base and do things in the right way, then they should get a little bit more money, but not to the point where I remember, like if you're a championship club, not just Leeds, Sheffield Wednesday, Sunderland, any of those teams, when they're on Sky, they get more viewers than half the Premier League teams, Luton, Bournemouth, Brighton, etc. But they get paid literal pennies, like 10% of what Brighton would, despite having... 50% more viewers so that it doesn't add up in that sense and also you need to give those league one teams more money so that they actually can market and try market in the local area and at least keep a local fan base yeah it just seems like at the minute 
all you see is stuff from big Premier League teams 24-7. And that's all you're going to get. I, I do completely agree with uh, what Brad said, though. For oil money to work and for it to be used like for the better of everybody, they need to be more, they need to crack down on rules. Big and time. they can't have grey areas, like you said. They need to... I think it's ridic- I think it's fucking ridiculous how Everton and Forrest have been given point deductions and are constantly getting looked into for one charge each. Mm. Whereas Man City, what, are they getting investigated for 115 charges, whatever it was? You're telling me there's 115 charges, not one of them. They're going to get prosecuted there for is, It's taking so long because it is, you know, it's a, it's a bigger case. In, in it's been taking, it's it's taken years. nearly 10 years. It is absolutely 10 years. It, it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it started ab- in 2014. It is ab- it's massive. So like you say, oh, it started in 2014. They brought rules six weeks ago, so much stupid. Yeah. Not six weeks, but you know. And they keep on doing it since 2014. So this, this, the FFP sort of started really being, I don't know, used against City 10 years ago in discussions. And they've been constantly doing it since. It's like they, they know they're under the eye of FFP, but they don't care. Do you know what? The, the, my issue with it is, though, not only has it been going on for so long, but it's it's been propelled by other things where it's like, when you look at the locations of the last couple of World Cups, like Russia and mm-hmm. Qatar, both of them, since been announced, it's been found out that there was corruption within FIFA, which yeah. led to the awarding of those countries getting the World Cup. So if there's literal corruption that's known about awarding the biggest competition in football to countries that didn't deserve it based on sport and merit or any type of sporting thing around football, then how can you expect? Because the FIFA is the biggest footballing it's, organization in the world. They should be the headquarters. Yeah, you know, they headquarters should be leading by example, and they're the ones that are fucking it up just as much as everyone else. And then they're also allowing these countries to them when the World Cup is there, especially with the Qatar one. Maybe Russia might have tried it a little bit. I was a bit younger then, so I didn't look into it as much. A lot of sports washing going down. Pretending like the country's really good, letting people drink alcohol yeah. there when most of the time you can't, mm-hmm. covering up stuff about people being injured and dying and, in the awful conditions. Yeah, yeah, so, awful. yeah, so if there's th- the biggest football organisation in the world is letting that happen under their watch, what can we expect from the Premier League? And I think for everyday people that love football, it's going to get to a really sad state where, because I feel it sometimes, I feel a bit disconnected when I see, I pulled the stat up. In the last five years in the Premier League, there's been 5.5 billion net spend net spend so that's discounting the amount that teams have brought in 5.5 billion is not even a real number in my head i can't comprehend Mm, how big that actually is so when you see numbers like that flying around corruption sports washing newcastle's awake it is practically a saudi arabia (laughs) flag (laughs) like no but it's mental and then all the geordies love saudi arabia but you don't mate if you went there and acted like how you act in newcastle you'd get stoned to death oh yeah so it's like i don't i don't know where you draw the line I do think it's a. I think we need to take into account though uh, the Qatar and Russia being picked. Uh, that was it got picked twenty ten. I think it was mm. that's when it got announced. And at that point in time, that's when corruption was all for. I mean, since then, Beckenbauer has been thrown under the bus, and you've had loads of people caught out for it. Uh, since then, they've they've announced America. I think America's a bit. Yeah, and it's America, it's, Canada, and Mexico. Yeah, I think yeah. which I think is Mexico definitely, especially a footballing nation. I think. That's far better than Russia and Qatar. It is better than Russia and Qatar, but they've Still also still a bit financial, especially like Qatar, like Ru- even Russia to some anywhere in Europe, fine. Like, but for me, it was the Qatar one where like we're gonna have a World Cup in somewhere that didn't exist. Like they had to yeah. build like twelve yeah. stadiums in stupid. It just of doesn't years. add up, does it? It's in yeah. a country that doesn't have a big footballing fan base. Some of the games were even sold out. Mm-hmm. It'd be interesting to see what where twenty thirty is. Like the amount of people they've like, announced them. Which one's 2030? Uh, 2030 is Spain and Morocco. Oh, yeah, isn't it? And then 2034 is Saudi Arabia. But Spain, Morocco and Portugal, that's not exactly... No, that's a good one. That's a very good one. Spain, Morocco and Portugal. Morocco have a bit of oil money, but... I think anywhere European-based is... It's, you know, but believable. But when you say Qatar, like... When you're having the world's biggest competition... Someone said, would love to see a worldwide salary cap in the comments. So that it, it goes across football. Because I actually, I thought at yeah. this point when I was talking about, when I was writing my notes for this, oh. not only is English football becoming really unfair, but also English football is getting to a level where soon we're just going to be better than every European team other than like Real Madrid and maybe one Italian team yeah. and, and PSG. So it's just going to be like five English teams and mm. one or two teams from other countries that are actually challenging. 
like I think in another couple of years, Atletico Madrid won't be yeah. still fighting because Barcelona and Real Madrid get all the TV money. They've had a good run under Simeone, but it won't last forever. I think that the the level to which the Premier League has grown in comparison to the other leagues is also going to be a negative, and it is for the same reason because it's had a stupid amount of investment. Yeah, that needs to come from somewhat bigger than each league because at the moment now you know like La Liga has its own rules, so does mm. Germany Premier League. Like even like Premier League's rules are disconnected from EFL, even though it still kind of works in conjunction with each other. Like the, the two separate, two separate um, sets of rules. So like a, a worldwide sort of like playing field of, oh Jesus, Pen- oh, that's a penalty, penalty surely. Got to be, got to be. Arsenal has to be. There's going to be a VAR check here. See if Arsenal end up with a penalty. He's laughing at him. Yeah, Diego Carlos is laughing in his face. Similar mm. to that Saka one. In is that a penalty? What do you think, Theo? He just kind of kicks his standing foot. I think the... Nah. There, there is a push in the back, though. It's not going to be a clear and obvious error, though, yeah, is it? I, yeah, since yeah. the referee's given it, not yeah, given it, no I penalty. Think. No penalty. Five were a penalty at the time. Ah, oh, I can feel it. <laughs> you can feel the nerves yeah. going through. It, it, even if you pick up a point, it's not the end of the day, but... Yeah, but it's again, just, just City going to drop. Take control of it. It's one of those. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's going to be real hard for you to actually end up winning the league this season. I think the bit that sticks to me, though, City just played Aston Villa at home and won what were it forward. Yeah, but Aston Villa played half the team because they wanted yeah. to rest everyone. Yeah, so yeah. it was literally a completely different scenario to this. And Aston Villa, if they win this, they're back up to fourth in the Premier League. So again, you're not playing no mugs. They are very, very good. We're not. We're fourth already at the moment. Oh, yeah, they might we're because Tottenham today. lost. Tottenham, Tottenham lost. Got beaten, yeah. Yeah. All right, well, they'll, they'll have kind of solidified the place there a little bit more then. Yeah, I think they've. I think the level on points. But it is wild when there's that bigger gap between first in the league and fourth in the league. You're kind of thinking, well, you should guaranteed beat them. Because I wouldn't have took this as an easy game at all. Yeah, they're a point ahead of Spurs as it stands. But Spurs have a game in hand. Handball. Arsenal free kick on the edge of the box in a very good position. I don't really see, I don't really see Arsenal score many free kicks. No, I don't. I don't even know who takes free kicks for years. Saka, early guard, it's one of them, so usually... Tealman's got a lot of hate at the start of the season because he was a little bit overweight and stuff, but I feel like he's come in and started doing pretty decent again and picked up some of that old form. I, I remember just before the World Cup, I, I was saying to my mates, I was like, if Tealman's has a good World Cup, he will be one of the most, similar to what happened to Enzo Fernandez, mm. he will be the most hyped midfielder and I really want Arsenal game. Belgium didn't do too great. And then since then, Tealman left Leicester, went Villa, a bit underwhelming. But... I do think Tiedemans can be one of the better midfielders in the league. Yeah, he can be. Top but he, 10 box to box. Uh, he midfielders. dropped off for a period of the season. He was really poor. I, 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 I remember he was scoring screamer after screamer yeah. after screamer. And Odegaard do anything with this free kick? It is in like, if you were going to put a free kick somewhere, it's in practically the perfect position, isn't it? Yeah. Far enough out I to get it up know. and over. The left footed Odegaard. Yes. I about left footed here though. Unless he like knuckleballs it or hits it like so sort of straight. Every time I see Trossard, it looks like he's never slept in his life. I know, oh yeah. Straight Dark at the wall. Circles, um, like a walking panda. But was there all else on the oil money stuff? We'll jump into a new one, if not. I feel that you can go around and around forever. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is as well, like us sat here ranting about it, it's never going to change. It's only ever going to get... At the end of the day, the majority, 99% of people... Uh, me included we, we all agree that football should be for the fans so. yeah, yeah I think any football fan pretty much agrees yeah. that but uh, yeah how do you make that a reality I don't really have an answer but get rich enough to do it yourself <laughs> yeah it fucking <laughs> never happen will it <laughs> let's go on to the most underrated Premier League players right now or this season I've got a couple I, I'll I've go in first couple, I'll yeah. go in first with this one um, my first shout is one that I would think you wouldn't expect, and it's actually Lucas Fabianski. Okay. Lupa, Lucas Fabianski, not an unbelievable keeper, not one of the best keepers in the league, but he's had 361 Premier League appearances, mainly between Arsenal and West Ham, and he's never been awful. He's just been solid enough. You can always rely on him to come in, have a decent game, a couple fuck-ups, but very rarely... And he never gets mentioned in the conversation for keepers. Obviously, he's getting on a little bit now. He doesn't start most Premier League games for West Ham. But I think he does play in the Europa League for them. And 
when he does play in the Premier League, he never really sets a foot wrong. So I don't. I've just never heard anyone mention Fabianski, mm. and he's been pro- pretty solid forever. Is are we going comp just forever or this season? I thought it was a season. I thought it was a season. That's what you told us. <laughs> yeah, what, yeah. Well, yeah. And no. Uh, but he has played this season. So he's played, yeah, he's, he's right. played yeah, like Europa. five or six Premier League games. He's played every Europa League game, started every Europa League game for him. So he's still in he is still playing this season. But my reasoning is because he's been playing forever and never really set a foot wrong. But even now I would never hear anyone say, Oh, he's actually a decent keeper. I like to ask It's a shout to be fair, like if you were looking for, you know, a number two or something, again, like he's not a name that comes straight away to mind. Yeah, whereas yeah. he's a keeper that you know, if you bring him in, one is good for Younger keepers at club and stuff, and then he'll do you a job. Like I said, don't really put a foot wrong when you think about him. No, I think he's pretty good. Theo, who's your an underrated Premier League player right now? I'm going to go with an obvious one. So I don't know if it isn't. He, he is underrated, but then I feel like everybody thinks he's underrated. So whether he is or not. Uh, but this season, Ross Barkley. Oh, great shout. I, I've been like, gassing him up all season yeah, as well. I can't believe he hasn't come to me. But yeah, he's been brilliant for Luton. And like yeah. I, I was saying as well on Twitter like a few weeks ago, like within a shout for Euros. Yeah. Surely just based on like, Nah, he's was, definitely not within a shout for Euros. I feel like I think I think, ah. I think I think in terms of like if so if a few people get injured. Yeah. Yeah, if a few people got injured, I think he's he's all right, but I think that now he's only doing well at Luton because he's a big fish in a little pond. But it's yeah, but it, the the revamp he's had, he went from be, being sat in knees doing fuck all. It, yeah, he's he's a big fish in a little pond, but it's the fact he's, he's doing it in the pre- he's not playing against Luton he's Do you playing not think against Premier League my side. problem with Barkley is he's, he's just like an injury table specialist not this season no Same. this season he's done well yeah I don't know I haven't seen enough of him but I've just I, I just wouldn't think it so I suppose maybe that's why he's under it but he's got I mean this season he's got five goals for us four assists he's got in the Premier League this season he's got the second most um, successful dribbles okay yeah, in the whole league. His goal used to do a class. Yeah, well, yeah. I'll be at the goal. Yeah, yeah but yeah, he's. Yeah, it's true. Paddy said big clubs can spend unlimited amount of cash until something works That's for them. And it is true because, like, you can sign, say, a Maratta for fifty million, and you know you can sell him for 40 and cut your loss whereas you know you invest that money as a like I don't know like a, a Bournemouth or a Brighton like mm. you you can't take that gamble so yeah it's a shout yeah who is an underrated player for you Brad in but the Premier League an underrated player for me I've got you know, I've always been a bit of a fan of him anyway Lewis Dunk Okay, John I think Brian, I put him in my most overrated. Yeah, overrated. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I overrated. Think when I see him, he just seems a bit clumsy. I know he's. I, th- I know he's not had like like he played for England and had an absolute you know stunk place out. But in ter- I think just in terms of like Brighton, like the amount of players have lost. You know, Caicedo, Kukurea, who else? Who else went? Uh, Ben White, players yeah. who were sold for big money, Trossard, like he's always just been there, you know, as a, yeah. as a rocket centre half, like they, c- they can rely on him. I think he's, for me, I just view him as steadily mid. Like I think he's just comfortable. Like he's never really challenged himself. I know Brighton have got better, but it's just kind of like he's just been at Brighton forever and he just yeah. does okay. But I, I just think that, yeah, he didn't strike me with anything. I, I, I wouldn't say he's overrated, but I wouldn't say so he's not, underrated. It's not, it's not a case of like he's underrated. Like, oh, he's so much better than people make out. It's a case of like he's more like underappreciated. For you know, he's, mm. he's still at Brighton. He's still doing a job week in week out. He has been relatively solid. I just think he's all right. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah but a steady player like Fabianski. Yeah. Then just all he's, right. He gives me the same you know, vibe as like play. a like a Ward Pross, like a you know just a, just an English player who's just. Every team needs one. Mm, he's just good. Just yeah. good enough for that team. Yeah. Um, my next one is maybe a questionable one because I think a lot of people do rate him, but not to the same level as me. So mm. I'm classing him as underrated. And it's Jared Bowen. Right. Because yeah. yeah, when 15 we, goals this season. To he has right. had an unbelievable season. Um, he has been involved in 40% of West Ham's league goals this year. Oh. He's either scored or assisted. I was going to put him on the list, but I thought he's quite rated. Yeah, yeah, yeah but I the thing that. is, I had a debate with some of the other boys. We, well, you were here, actually, and we did our England starting lineup. I did have him in my England squad. Our England, England squad. Yeah, you didn't yeah. even have, have him in the England squad. And on that squad at all? This is what I mean. A lot of people don't have him going to the Euros. It's and I, think, I wanted an extra midfielder. 
Yeah. Ah, but Bowen's this is what he's got to be there. He has been incredible. He's been so good mm. this season in a West Ham team that hasn't done as well as they did last year as well. Or at least uh, they're doing okay, but he's just been quality. 15 goals, five assists, involved in 40% of West Ham's goals. He needs to be on the plane to the Euros, and I don't think people put him quite at the right level to where he's actually playing at right now, which is one of the best wingers in the Premier League. Yeah, I think he's very it's good, fair. but I don't, I don't think any, anyone disagrees with you. Well, you didn't even have him going to the Euros? <laughs> no, but uh, but the, like I said, it, I, it's not like I picked another right winger over him. It's because I wanted uh, another striker and another midfielder. Cause I felt like so you like, sacrificed him in a way? Yeah, because so I, I, I bought three, who did you have? I had three strikers in Tony, so like, uh, Tony Watkins. and My wingers were Gordon, Foden and Saka. So yeah. he, I bought some Cole I'd argue that he gets in over, over Gordon. Yeah, but well, Gordon's on the left. Gordon's he on doesn't. Left, yeah, he right. doesn't play on the right. But because Foden want to play at middle, so I wanted like an out and out left. I think if Bowen was playing at Arsenal in the Arsenal team, he'd have the same, if not better, output than Saka this season. Probably better. Yeah, yeah. But then you're definitely taking Saka. Saka's playing in a ten times better team and only has a couple more com- combined goals and assists. He go. I think if we were going to do like, well, I've missed out on the overrated one, but he'd go in my overrated one with Saka. Yeah, he, yeah. Went, he was in uh, that as well. Ellis said that, and then I sort of backed it up. I think that, yeah. yeah. So why? how can you be dead set on taking Saka, but uh, unsure on Bowen? He's got three less know, goals. It's hypocritical, <laughs> it's hypocritical, I know, but I don't know, Saka's just... I know you've got to have on. love for Saka, but yeah. yeah, I think Bowen's simply got to be there. Um, anyway, have you got another criminally underrated player in the Premier League for us? I, th- I think it's disgusting how much abuse this player gets, because I... Yeah, I I, I adore him. Price tag was a bit heavy. Maybe still, but I think Kai Havertz. One of our <laughs> better players. Yeah, he, he gets so much abuse. So much. I'm not even... When he was at Chelsea, he got abused. I think people who forget he won Chelsea the Champions League. Yeah. But this season, he's got nine goals, five assists, I think it is. Mm. That's very good going for someone who doesn't really play striker. And... A lot of our creativity and output stems from Havertz. Yeah, he has a few, he just missed a few sitters. Or there's a lot of things he does where it's like, oh, I wouldn't have done that. But he, he brings Erdegaard and Rice into the further forward because they can use him. Mm-hmm. And it's the same with the wingers. Havertz is just, and he's also very something, something very different for Arsenal, a tall striker, which we've not really had since Aubameyang. Yeah. But I just think, I mean, we paid 60 million for him. Maybe a bit steep because we could have used it elsewhere. But I'm not complaining about it. Do you know what? I looked at you then as if it was a criminal take when he said After Havertz. That, you know, no, but I actually, I've said it from day when Arsenal signed him. I, I think it is, the price tag sets too high of an expectation yeah. on him. But I think yeah. when you think about what Havertz is meant to bring to a team, he has successfully done that at Arsenal. And I think he's been a good signing. We and spoke about him a little bit last week, didn't we? Saying like, he kind of... Gets un, un, he's a bit underappreciated because he's has the same sort of role as Firmino. You know what I mean? Like one of those where you know he's a striker whose job isn't just to score goals. You know he's got to he's got so much more responsibility on his shoulders. I, I just think he's he's been under Arteta for eight months now. Nine months. Give him three years at Arteta, under Arteta. I think he could be one of the better strikers in the league. Well, did you see his stats this season? He's had nine goals and five assists. I think so, yeah, yeah, that. For me, as a Premier League player, 31, go- 31 games, nine goals yeah. and five assists is fucking quality. Like, you actually can't complain at that, especially in your first season at a new club under a completely different system when he's not played a striker every game as well, has he? Yeah, he's been playing centre mid. Yeah. So and he's not played, he's, there's been quite a few games where he's been on bench. So. so, yeah, you can't complain at that. I think Havertz, I agree. I think he's underrated. Brad, have you got another shout for us? Uh, not criminally underrated, but again, I feel like... I've, I've gone off a topic, and I? I've gone more underappreciated, but I've gone Solanke. Mm. I yeah. think, you know, he were ab- like absolutely thrown to Wolves when he left Liverpool, got a bomb, of course, a big transfer fee, and then now he's, he's looking, you know, under Ariel, a, a better, you know, rounded striker, Chip, uh, chipping, in, chipping in with goals. I said this in the overrated list, I think Solanke's better than Tony. I think he brings, nah, again, I think he brings more. Not after one good season. Yeah, this, like, this is his first good season in Premier League, whereas, you know, Tony's yeah. got a right for teams to be sniffing around it. Oh, oh. oh my. Aston Villa just hit the crossbar and the post at the same time with one shot. Wow. 
That would have all been from Zinchenko, that as well. Zinchenko yeah. gave the ball away on the edge of the box so pointlessly. Um, on, S- on Solanke, though, I actually disagree with both of you. I think that he's not that good. I think he... <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he's all right, but I just think it won't last. I don't think, as a footballer, he's got much talent. I think he's just done. I think he's just had one of those seasons. I think it'll be like, who can I compare it to? Like that geezer at Swansea that had a good year and everything. Well, that Michu. Michu. I think yeah. it'll be like Streets that. Streets won't forget. Yeah, yeah. I think he's, he's not really lit up the place like like a Michu. He did well last season though. Like well, he did well last season. I just don't think he, I when I see him play football, I don't think he's a top top player. Like he's no. a decent striker, but I just don't have him in that bracket. I don't know what's he on. He's he's up there, and if. Uh... Yeah, I'm no, he's doing really well. Out, like, I'm not, say, I'm not saying he's bad, but I wouldn't say... What I'm saying is I don't think he's underrated. I think people rate him correctly in the fact of, yeah, he's having a good year. He does all right sometimes, but I, I don't think he's, like, top quality. Mm. 17 goals, though. Yeah, no, he's he's doing well. He's doing well. Oh, scary time for Arsenal. who just keep giving the ball away back to Aston Villa at the minute. I think I've got one more underrated player, and... That is Kovacic. Yeah. He's not started the majority of games for City this season. I think he started around 40% of games. Uh, but he's also played a fair few minutes in European competitions for him. And I think he was signed because City realised that Calvin Phillips wasn't good enough. But if you were a player who Chelsea deemed to be unnecessary... I'd say that. Chelsea deemed him to be unnecessary and then signed two hundred million pound midfielders who have actually done yeah, worse that in heavy, the Chelsea they don't team. Don't look no better if not worse. I think that that makes you realise how good he was and how impactful he was for Chelsea. But then also, whenever he has played for City, who at the time of him signing are the best team in the world, he's never looked out of place. Yeah, not he's, once. He's coming in, and no one ever mentions him. Yeah, he's been the player that, that I think the European Calvin Phillips would be. Mm-hmm. You know, like coming in able to replace Roger, but whereas he just never got going. So I think Kovacic isn't spoke about enough. I think he could start for the majority of Premier League clubs and it'd never be questioned. And his name is never brought up in terms of good central midfielders. It's fair shout. I've got, uh, I've got another one. Um, Endo from Liverpool. Oh, yeah. I think he's nowhere near Fabinho, but I don't think many CDMs are going to be ever live up to Fabinho. Uh, but this season, it. He, I think he's 31 years of age, but he he, look, he plays and looks like he's 24. Mm, yeah. Like, I'd Klopp was saying this, is his prime will be in like four years. <sighs> and it's, he's just he's just very solid. He, he's kept Liverpool very balanced. In a, I mean, their midfield is... McAllister's playing CDM off at the time. He, he, he's been the only th- thing in that midfield where it's been consistent. And he, he's just very solid. He's, he, he's not very... He's not very He's not going to score many goals. He's not going to. He's not a very flashy player, but he's what Liverpool need right now—just some just steadiness. Do you know what? I actually really like Endo. I completely yeah. agree. I'm surprised I didn't have him in in my shouts because I've spoke about it a couple of times on here that I think since he's come in, he's shored up Liverpool's midfield very well. I mean, obviously they're not doing too great at the minute. They've had a couple of bad results on the bounce, but that doesn't change the fact that a player coming in on loan and doing this well is very impressive. I think there's an option to buy there as well, isn't there? For yeah, there is. It's pretty cheap, isn't it? Yeah. Like 10, 15 million, which should be a steal. It just depends if the new manager wants him or not. Yeah, so I agree with that shout. Brad, did you have any more? Uh, one last one were Elanga at Forest. Okay. I think mainly because, you know, kind of out of favour at Man United and he, one of the, we touched on this last week, like a player who kind of had to move to get football, mm. done it and, you know, he's. I think he's up there for... You know, like most assistant league, I think he's like third or fourth or something like that. So he's chipping in with his fair amount and enjoying his football. I think it's nice, we mentioned it, it's nice to see a player actually push for a move mm. and yeah. go somewhere so they can play and try further the career instead of just sitting and earning loads of money on bench. So I'm not against the shout. I can't lie, I've not seen enough of him to kind of call it either way. But if he is that high in assists and I've not seen much from him, then you're probably correct. Uh, I've got one last one. Go ahead. Um... He's got, this season in the Premier League, he's got 11 goals and six assists. I don't know that anyone would have realised. He got two yesterday. Chris Wood. No. Uh, yep. Mateus Cunha. Oh, Wolves. all right. He nearly signed for Leeds at one yeah. point when we were in the Premier League. You kind of turn your nose up at Chris Wood again. Like, he's got more goals in him. Has he? Yeah, yeah Chris Wood's <laughs> had a pretty good year as I well. I think he's on 12 or 13 goals this season. I don't know Chris Wood. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Cunha is good. Um, Wolves have had a... 
A strange year because everyone says it's a better year, but it's not really. Yeah. yeah. Everyone <laughs> thinks they've done really well, but they actually haven't done much better than last season. Yeah. It's like the the image around Wolves has improved. I suppose yeah. maybe some other teams are doing better, but in reality, they haven't actually done that well. I think it's just because they've had a, f- a few of the players that everyone was unsure on have had seasons like uh, uh, Huang Hee Chan and yeah. Cunha have actually proven to be quite good signings. Mm. Well, I think that Cunha is very good. I think if you put that Cunha in a Man City, he'd do well. He'd do. Very well. And where I think did, he, where'd they sign him from? Do you know? Uh, uh, I can't remember in which order it was, but he did play for Leipzig and he played for Hoffenheim. He signed, they signed him from one of them. Someone commented, Solanke reminds me of Bamford when we come up and he scored 17. Not a great footballer, but he's just managed to get goals. That's yeah, kind of how I, I just, feel. I don't, I don't think Solanke will fall off though. I think he, I have a feeling he's going to clip me when he does or doesn't. Either yeah. way. <laughs> but it's like last season, he got, yeah, last season I looked, he got 15 goal contributions. Yeah, he's. Uh, I don't know. Is, it's not bad. It's not bad, for like especially for Bo- especially for Bournemouth. That's quite yeah. impressive, because um, obviously their team's pretty crap. So for him to be doing that well, but no, I didn't have any other shouts. There was one man that's playing today that I nearly put in there, but I don't particularly think he's underrated. I think everyone just rates him c- maybe correctly. And is it's he a Din- striker? No, it's no. Dinya. Oh, I was gonna say I thought you were gonna say John McGinn then. <laughs> nah, John McGinn's a little rat bag. I don't like him. <laughs> 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 but um, Dinya, I think. He was solid at Everton when Everton were actually fighting relegation and then in a season when they were doing all right, he was there. And then he's just been quality for Villa. Like Whenever he plays, he's good. He whips in dangerous crosses. He doesn't actually have that many assists, but he still has a dangerous cross on him, which is a weird combination to say, but he still looks good when he's going forward. Mm. Pretty solid defensively and he's played hundred like over 100 games in the Prem now. I think we forget that he's a Barcelona left back. Yeah, he was, wasn't he? Yeah. That's what I mean. He's got a lot of... But he's exactly, and if you were talking about best fullbacks in the league, no one ever really mentions Dinya, but why not? I think if he was the left back at, maybe not Arsenal, but maybe Man United when Shaw's crocked, which is majority of the season, I don't think anyone would question him playing. Yeah. I think he'd do really well. Same with Spurs. I mean, maybe at Arsenal, actually. Yeah. Would you take Dinya at Arsenal? If it means Zinchenko doesn't play. <laughs> exactly. No, I think I think he's a better yeah. fullback than Zinchenko. We were looking at him. Like, I remember in like FIFA 20, I signed him on a career mode. Like I have always, I've always liked Dino. I've always thought he was a, a solid left back. Yeah, he's pretty decent. I have, I have no hurt for him. Do, do, do. Well, how are we feeling, Theo? There's 20 minutes left of the match. It's still nil nil. Oh, I do still think there's a goal in this game. I think there is. Both teams have had a couple of decent opportunities throughout. Uh, at least it's not been as big a snooze fest as the previous Arsenal yeah. game. We did. I, I refuse to go on this podcast twice and watch two no nils. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse. It's just every time you know it's not going to go well. <laughs> just not a single goal. Don't worry. You're not as bad. Josh, the Man United fan, came on the, for the first couple of times and just watched them lose three times in a row, which was pretty entertaining <laughs> for everyone else. At least but, something happened. Yeah. Um, one thing I wanted to touch on. So Everton were given another two-point deduction this week, which they still look like they're going to be safe in the Premier League. It shouldn't be a massive deal for them. Uh, and then it was also announced that Sheffield United are going to be deducted two points when they return to the Championship next season. And my question is, do you not think that that's really stupid? The fact that it's like they've agreed they're going to deduct them the points, why not deduct them now? I guess, I don't know, maybe they're just thinking. It's you, from you That's from breaking EFL rules on, not from... Breaking prem rules, so they can't like it's two separate. So, mm. so oh, like okay. when they jump drop down, that's when they'll get the points deduction. That's why Leicester won't get it this season as well. Well, the prem and the okay. EFL need to actually join up more because yeah. the amount of times it's happening. Like we looked at it with Wolves, it's looking like they might actually have some kind of punishments coming their way. I know they had a fine a couple of years ago, but when they come up from the championship, for they signed fucking Ruben Neves in the yeah. championship yeah. for like <laughs> thirty million. Yeah, we got a weird thing going on where we what's that agent called? Is it? George Mendes or something. Yeah, yeah, where, yeah he yeah. had like just a massive catalogue of players that ended up at Wolves. So, I don't know. I just see these point deductions. Um, obviously, sorry Everton fans, but I actually think it's quite a good thing that you're getting punished for the things you've done pretty recently. Mm-hmm. It's just going to be weird when next season other teams are punished for stuff they did fucking seven years ago yeah. in Manchester City or whatever. I think that how long it takes... What it's going to end up leading to, in my opinion, is the Premier League's going to start getting sued by every other club. Because every club's going to have a way to say, well, if they broke FFP, then why aren't they getting in trouble for it? No, 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 no. Yeah. So it's just it's just ridiculous. This is back to like what me and Brad were saying. They need clear cut rules, no grey areas. Mm-hmm. If you break FFP, you get two point fine, or you get if you do this, you get that. Instead of being like, we've done this, what do we give you? Because I feel like 
two clubs can do the exact same thing, but will somehow end up with two different punishments. Yeah, mm. that's exactly the problem. So they just need it to be more clear. Because then, then there's no arguments with it. Wouldn't that's a fun one for us, Brad? Did you see this week that Jean Kevin Augustin actually Leeds dropped the case of <laughs> oh, trying Jesus. to not pay his wages? So not only did we pay Got around five. twenty five million in transfer yeah. fees, we've actually paid him ninety grand a week for a four year contract, which means we've paid him another twi- twenty five million pounds in wages for a player that played what nine minutes for us? Few minutes. Have you seen based on amount per minute is the most expensive transfer in football history? Jesus. That o- officially the most expensive transfer. What, so what, what actually happened? So we had him on loan when we were in the championship. Yeah. And the, the clause was, if he plays and we get promoted, we have to buy him. Yeah. He played nine minutes in, in one of the last games of the season. Mm-hmm. We didn't get promoted. Oh, no, we did, didn't we? Was that the season we did get promoted? The season before. So yeah. why did we have to sign him then? No, sorry, it was the season we got promoted. I remember. I want to. I want to. I started getting it up, so I want to get up the proper facts so I get it right. So Leeds had an obligation to buy him for eighteen million if they got promoted that season. After playing just forty-eight minutes due to falling out of favour with Marcelo Bielsa, Leeds pulled out a signing in permanently despite going up. They claimed that the delay in finishing the season due to COVID nineteen meant that the clause in the deal had elapsed. So we said because the season finished later, oh, right. it technically that doesn't way, yeah. count. Yeah, it was yeah. still technically on loan because the fini- season finished later, but it was on so the, the loan the, until the it ended. Say like until, by that date until like that. June. Yeah, it, uh, but then they June. FIFA said no. So Leipzig complained to FIFA who ruled in April 2023 that Leeds must pay Augustin 24.5 million, um, pay for Augustin at 24.5 million with FIFA documents showing the deal was set to be a five-year contract worth £93,000 per week. Wait, so is he currently a Leeds player then? No. no. So, so you paid the money? So we said we don't. got him? No, we never even got him. So so surely you might as well just get him to sell him then? Well, no, because the five-year contract's probably nearly up now and he's crap. <laughs> Where is Augustine now? Let's have a look at what Augustine's doing in his career. He could probably just retire. The fat little worst. Don't have to, don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> he's playing in the Swiss Super League where he's had two goals in 18 matches. I oh. see what, 93k though in the championships a bit steep. Right? They got what if we went up. So, been oh, paying right. him so we did go up, up but the problem is we've only just paid the money now. So if we don't get promoted this season, our financial fair play is going to be fucked in the championship for next year because we've just had to pay him 25 million in wages, which is yeah. practically your whole budget. Yeah. Well, so uh, maybe San Francisco can bail you out of it. I think, I think um, there's a guy into it who like breaks... Oh no! Scramble no, 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 no. kind of like breaks it down. And he says like we're going to be all right under that financial fair play thing because of the sales of um, Adams and Sinistera that aren't even on the records yet. So oh, when they, they go on, it'll kind of balance it out a little oh, bit. Okay, but it might it. it might mean that if we don't go up, we do need to. Wow, well, you know, took one at first then. But um, if we do go up, we might need to sell like uh, Nonto or Somerville or something yeah. like that. Well, I would expect Somerville to leave if we don't go up anywhere, yeah. to be honest. Where to I, th- I reckon Liverpool going for him. Yeah, maybe Liverpool. I think it depends where other players go. I could see if Bowen goes from West Ham, maybe some e they sign him, team of that level. I'd have him at Arsenal. I'd have I wouldn't even rule out... You'd have um, him at Arsenal? Somerville. Somerville's a great player. Yeah, but who's, he's not going to get in team over Martinelli. Yeah, but Trossard's in his 30s now. Yeah, no true. Way. I mean, I think at any top Premier League club, he'd do really well. He's got second choice being second choice being Somerville or somebody because he can play out on the right and the left. Mm. Arsenal even and I'll back up even, on the right. Even when he plays out wide, he can he can come yeah. inside with it. I'll well. back up on the right. It's currently Reese Nelson, so I'd rather have Somerville. A fantastic, oh, nearly fantastic ball <laughs> from Mice. I thought it was there. gonna, yeah, I thought it was gonna just make it over. Oh, this could be another nil nil. Yeah. 15 minutes left of this. It's got a little bit scrappy in the last 10 minutes, hasn't it? Um, shall we jump into the Arsenal project? Yes. Theo, I feel like you're going to have a lot to say on this one. Absolutely. Um, and my question is, is the Arsenal project really a project? I think so, yeah. Or is it just another club that spent a lot of money? Mm, I think... But, I'll let, it's your right, team. I'll, I'll let you go. I'll... I'll. Right. Uh, just to clarify, uh, from day one, I trusted the process. Mm. I've, I've always said this, even when we all finish it, when we finished eighth twice, I trusted the process. It's a project instead of us just spending money, because you've also got to realise it wasn't just us. I know buying the hottest new players because that's not what we did at all. We've signed Ben White, who 
we turned into a completely different player than we've ever seen from him. Fifty million pounds signing. Yeah, I don't know, right? But but like who um, had just won the championship and then had one of the best right. Premier League seasons from a new. But a lot of our playing. players like Saliba, Gabriel. I know, I know Martinelli came in under Emery, but that was the start of the process. We tried starting the process with Emery. Martinelli. We we've signed loads of players who weren't at all ready yet, and mm. we've allowed Arteta to mould them. But it's not only that, it's, it's club culture. The big process came with, came, uh, came with club culture. That was the most important thing. Well, I think there has been a big process in club culture, but what you've kind of done there is missed out some of the most important parts. You've named certain players, but you haven't named Declan Rice for 115 Yeah, but million. that's once the process has already... Or Kai Havertz for 75 million. Oh Jesus for fifty two million. <laughs> so it's like you can say, all right, Martinelli was quite cheap. He was part of it. Saka, homegrown, fair enough. But he's also on like what three fifty a week now. So yeah, I agree that the infrastructure around the club and and what Arteta has implemented in terms of morale within the squad and how people should treat each other and kind of the vibes that the team give off is fantastic. But also. Do you not think it's easier to believe in the process when you're signing some of the best players in the world for 50 plus million every season? I know. Yeah, but the, sorry, sorry. No, I'm going fine, your the, club. The difference is, though, we've always done that. But with the with the Arteta process, we're doing that now. Whereas we did it before, we'd spend, I don't know, 50, when we spent however much on Lacazette and didn't do that well. Now we're spending players, they're all paying off, the majority of them. Um... But it's also the fact we, there was a massive process in getting rid of Aubameyang and every bit of dead weight in the club, Ozil. Mm. We got rid of all them, whereas before we'd keep them and then sign one or two people. We got rid of all them off the wage bill. People thought at that point, it's a bit mental that we're getting rid of our world-class striker, Aubameyang. We're getting rid of Ozil. We're getting rid of all these players that are once one of the top five in their position to then have a complete fresh, put faith in the Youth Academy, which we never really did. Have you really put faith in the Youth Academy, though? Saka. Yeah, but that's it. What, Smith-Rowe? Saka, Smith-Rowe. Smith-Rowe never plays. Yeah. It it was quite prominent. I like Smith-Rowe. Yeah, I I think he's quite a good player, but he doesn't really play. He's clearly not one of Arteta's favourites, is he? So I, no, but this is what I mean. Is it really a project if it's all just signings? It's all just top top oh, no. levels. Like, right, when you signed Ben White, you knew he was going to be quality. When you signed Jesus, you knew what he'd bring to the team. I'm not saying he's top quality. When you signed Declan Rice, he was the second best centre defensive midfielder in the league. Maybe not in the world at that point because he's not doing it at top level. When you signed Zinchenko, you knew exactly what you were signing and he's kind of lived up to that. Maybe he's been a little bit of a flop. Odegaard, I think he's a smart one. Martinelli's a smart one that probably costs less. Odegaard was 35 million. If you were trying to get him now in today's football market, it cost fucking 70. But at the same time, he's one of those as well. You had him on loan, thought, all right, yeah, he's pretty decent. We'll sign him. I think that the process to me means smarter recruitment, which it has been. But all, definitely. it's definitely been smarter recruitment. But then when you look at it in comparison to other Premier League clubs, that's what I mean by smarter. Arsenal, Arsenal's net spend over the last five seasons has been 640 million, right? The only teams that are higher than that is Chelsea at 785. The majority of that came last summer. So you can kind of discount them because they're at the start of their messy project. And Manchester United at 695, who everyone just slams for awful recruitment all the time. Is that, you can say that's five years? The last five seasons, yeah. Oh. The, the thing is, for me, I I know it's hard to do, but for, for me, the term process ended last season. So the, for me, the process was from 2019 Christmas when he came up until when we, that season when we bought the league. So if you take away, since then, we've signed Rice. And I feel like the Rice and Havertz signing, we can sort of ignore that as part of the process because at that point, we were now a certified club that were going to get top five every, every season and fight for the league. So you're saying that it, you're the project... So I don't, I don't think Rice and Havertz were part of the process. Yeah, but they're not when you're saying where you are now. Yeah, so my point is the the build-up that allowed us to now be in that position where Rice and Havertz start to be part of the process, that bit is the process. So I say the only big signing in that time period, money-wise, was Ben White and Jesus. And Ben White still needed a lot of development. Jesus was proven, but... Yeah, look at what like, Ben White's been moulded into. Like, he's yeah. not just... Well, he's not a centre-back at the moment. Like He's playing right-back almost like a right centre-back at times when Zinchenko pushes on. But 
like you were saying, Theo, like for me, I, I think the, the word project depends on a club to club basis. So, like, whatever manager came into Arsenal, the project were going to be right, we need to be competing again. We're Arsenal yeah. Football Club, we need to be challenging for the league, and we need to be, you know, trying to win that, that Champions League. Mm. So, if you look at like where the Warren Arteta came in and where they are now, I can say, like you said, that project is almost complete because we're competing. Now it's a case of the next step is winning stuff. Otherwise, like the work that's been done before that, it, it falls down like an house of cards because like to compete is one thing, but you don't want to be known as nearly men. You, you know, you you want to be winning stuff. I think that's why it's quite crucial that, you know, you, you win the league this season because you can't get away with two seasons in a row saying, oh yeah, but we pushed Man City. That's not a trophy. Like, mm. that's, but, but, but that's, but then that's putting Man City on a pedestal. You know what I mean? Like, like oh, well, we're competing with City. But then I'd also argue where... I think it's a stigma among Arsenal fans now, and it annoys, it annoys me a lot with Arsenal fans. I get expectations change, but this project of such, when Arteta joined in 20, at the end of 2019, 2020, the goal of the project was, we're talking six, seven, eight years. We have done this far too early. We, we've got into the position we are way earlier than expected. I know, but I think you're overshooting it though. I don't think it's fair to say that you can have a project in modern football that's seven, eight years long. Oh, not not as like, because when Arteta came in, you were still like a self-sufficient football club. It's not like a load of debt there and stuff. Yeah, like Arsenal, you, they've got a new, yeah. it, you had the new stadium that was paid off. You had good revenue coming in. You could spend a good amount. I appreciate that the previous recruitment strategies with the likes of Pepe, et cetera, was really poor. And yeah. there has been a much better job with that. But I don't, I don't agree with you. Your mindset. Oh, oh my goal. Aston Villa won. Arsenal nil. Leon Bailey. <laughs> oh, What's going on sake. in the top leagues of football? What the fuck? And just like that, it's the 84th minute and Aston Villa have taken the lead oh, wow. against Arsenal. Theo. There was no <laughs> process. <laughs> <laughs> Choking over a million at it. <laughs> well, so Arsenal are losing. Liverpool lost. That if it stays as it is, that gives City all opportunity to run away with it. Well, that's City's point, absolutely... point clear. And I said it last time, but after this game, after Arsenal dropping points to Villa and Liverpool dropping points to Luton. Not Luton. Liverpool dropping points to Crystal Palace. That gives Manchester City to win the league. All they have to do is beat Brighton, Forest, Wolves, Fulham and West Ham. That is horrific defending from Declan Rice. At worst, it comes down to what? West Ham. <laughs> yeah. but West Ham have been atrocious. Look at this from Declan Rice's positioning. He just stood there. Doesn't even track the switch off. It's more expectation it just, uh, for, from Paul to, to sort it out, isn't it? And Emery goes 1-0 up at the Emirates. And he's not shy where, about it either. <laughs> yeah, his career took a tumble at Arsenal and from that point, he's done fantastically well. That's poor from Declan Rice, man. But it is a corner for Arsenal. There's still a chance that you get a goal back, Theo. There's still a chance. We get other season, got scored two in like 90th minute. It, what, Reece Reece Nelson, Nelson yeah, Reece against yeah. Bournemouth. That was a mental game. So we were 2-0 down in the first so, five what, minutes. What happened? Just like... Going off any sort of topics and stuff. What happens this season? And if you don't win Champions, what you're not in? If we don't win any trophy. Are you in FA Cup still? No, no. We yeah, don't so Arsenal like, whip it in. What happens oh. this season? Like, does he keep getting a crack at it, Arteta? Because you're not, you're not like failing massively. You're just, you know, stumbling. Thing is, though, realist uh, in the grand scheme of things, are you going to sack Arteta for finishing second? I'm not saying sack. Ollie Watkins is through. No way. One on one. Oli oh, Watkins, what a finish. and it's 2-0 to Aston Villa, just like that. Oli Watkins with the second goal. <laughs> he's got his mouth's wide open. <laughs> oh my God. He's done so well there as well to hold him off. It's a right finish. Amazing from Watkins. I don't know if there was a question around offside. I think he was still in his own half when he got played through. Theo, what's happened here, mate? I don't fucking know, Joe. <laughs> um, 
Who would have predicted this? Oh my this? god! Aston Villa two, Arsenal nil. I had three one. I said one all. It was a two two. I don't think that's going to happen now. I mean, it's <laughs> two two boys. <laughs> Let's look at this. Just Arsenal nice. gave the ball away so pointlessly. Yep, definitely not offside. Every league in England is having a strange, strange title race at the minute. Let me look at City's fixtures. Well, it's I can get them up for you, mate. City's fixtures that remain are Brighton away, Forest away, Wolves at home, Fulham away, and West Ham at home. The thing is, they're well, going to win all. Still got Tottenham to play. Oh yeah, that's not Tottenham haven't been added in yet. Yeah. Sorry. The but. thing is as well that like you can't say, oh yeah, but they've got Europe to focus. They can go, they can go to a Brighton or a Forest and play a complete different. Well, team and, and Arsenal have got Europe to fresh. focus on as well. No, that's what I mean though. Like Ars Arsenal have got to think about rotation. Whereas City, they can go and play Alvarez up top and rest Island if they want against mm. a Forest. You know what I mean, like they've got that much flexibility. And also back to my final point on the project was going to be when you say the project is complete. I don't think the project can be classed as complete until you win one of the major trophies, which to me is the Champions League or the Premier League. That's the end goal, and that'll be the end goal from the ownership as well. No, but I mean the yeah, like your your investment has got to amount to something. Like like we said, like it's Arsenal Football Club. You don't just want to be competing. So, so if I so if I say to you a genuine question, if I say in tw if I told you guys in twenty nineteen, there's going to be this massive process. We're going to Spend what six hundred fifty million, but and what we get out of it is a complete different club culture. Finishing second twice to City, pushing it until last game of the season. I mean, it's better, but it's not perfect. And it, if you're saying it to within, us, within three but, years, yeah, but you're saying it to us as Leeds fans, which is different because so you're Arsenal. I think from the perspective of an Arsenal fan, uh, I like, think that's good enough. I, I think that's good enough to win nothing. for this stage. To win to win nothing. If you this season, I, this is but this worth. I know expectations change, but. The problem with Arsenal fans, we 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 ask for way too much, and well, f I think I think if we go next season without winning anything, then, then would you start to question? Then it? I would. Okay, but I still think this season. No, fine. I think this season because it's Rice's first season, kind yeah. of bedding in Havertz first season. I get it. I wasn't predicting you to win the league at the start of the year, so I just think that yeah, you're right. Next season, if there's not a ma if there's not a UCL or a Premier League, I think that the pro I think maybe you need to start looking at a, a different option. But then, but then, but then I'd say because also if next season by then we would have a hopefully a Watkins. Mm. We yeah, have yeah. a left back. Yeah, like but then that's when it goes back to my hand, which is it a, pro a project? Then if you're like, just signing I, I, the best player yeah, in the you position, need a left in the back, you need a strike back, and you've got all the you know waters yeah. to go do that. Like, I appreciate like you're lacking in some positions as a Liverpool. Fucking ridiculous. You know I, mean? I know, I know, City are a complete different monster in terms of like what we've built. But like, but even City's net spend has been three hundred million less than Arsenal's in the last five years. But, but then, mm. so you make the point: is it a project because you're spending money? Realistically. It's impossible to get to get in the position we are without spending money. No, but I think that there's been that so much money spent. Never be a project. Martinelli, oh, he didn't even look like he wanted to win that. Literally, didn't look like he cared. The project doesn't exist without money. You can't. No, you can't. You can't fight for the title. There's, there's the money, company. and then they're spending the third most in the league. Yeah, and and coming out with with, with nothing. Like it isn't. We're not saying Is like you, you can't spend money. Like spending money is not a bad thing, but it's a case of like. Yeah, you're investing in players and like like your Ben White now, you know, br brilliant right back, and then you. Like but you would expect a 50, the, 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 you'd expect a fifty pound, fifty million pound right back of centre back to, to be a good player to go straight into your team. Yeah, yeah. that's not Arteta. That's signing a good player. I'd also like to clarify though, for me, I'm like, I'm eighteen. Mm -hmm. In my lifetime, in terms of being able to watch football and probably understand it. So you're I've not seen us get second. I've seen us get second once, and that was in 2016 when Leicester won the league. Really, I've not seen us. You're, I've not seen us had a Champions League quarterfinal. You're really like football, like coming into it comes post Wenger, really, yeah. and done it. So. so, so if I, so I know completely different. So, yeah. but this is a way extreme answer. But if you told City fans 20 years ago you'd have an FA Cup in you, there was that, that City fan who was saying it. If you told him you had an FA Cup in them, they'd be, be buzzing. Yeah. If you're telling me. We can get second tw two years in a row. That's the best I've ever seen. You, you know, you know your history as well. well you know, like, yeah, you, but you're still Arsenal Football Club. Like, you won. You're part of the big six. Yeah, I understand that. Which, I, which is why I get there's high expectations. But for me, if I'm being humble about it, right? This is, this is the best you've ever seen. So for is, you, the project is working. Yeah, 
Whereas if you if you got to watch the Invincibles week in week out, like my dad did, it's a little bit different. Yeah, Arsenal in the box. It just doesn't look like there's anyone that's actually going to grab a goal here, no. does it? This is where we need a but Tony. Dead oh, cock is compact behind ball as well. Though. Like there's not to really play through if we can swing it wide. Kivio whacks it in. Touch. In the box. Oh. oh, great defending. As if Eddie and Ketty is still at Arsenal. I know. Yeah, that's, that, he, he, yeah. he got a new contract at one point. Yeah, I mean, he's like, not yeah. a horrible yeah. football. He got a new contract in the number 14, and I was like, why? <laughs> It's pointless. I, I don't mind him as a footballer. I actually think he's pretty decent, but he's certainly not Arsenal levels. There's I, absolutely I no so. chance. I'm devastated. So, Theo, it's looking like Arsenal have lost this. There's five minutes left. It's 2-0 to Aston Villa. Do you think that this means Arsenal have bottled the Premier League or is this still a chance? Yeah, it's over. It's over. Because it's down to City and I can't see City. That's the thing. Like it, It's so annoying now you can't... This is where... We I don't think we'll lose again. But it, it's just another City title win. That's what it yeah. ends up being. Yeah, you've pushed them for two seasons, but it just ends up being another City title winning. You can't knock them off the store because you don't fancy them to drop points. Whereas like an Arsenal or Liverpool, you think, oh, well, they could have a nick up. Like, whoever doubts City against like a Brighton or a Forest or... I'd like to clarify. I don't think it. I don't think it'll happen. What happened last season, where we just started losing to Southampton and whoever. Mm-hmm. Uh, I still think. Yeah, Tim, will you just grab the fire stick remote? Just click. Yes. No, it's all right. <laughs> you weren't even watching the game. Oh, that, yeah, yeah, there we are. Uh, so I, d- I do think. Well, we're just going to win the re- win the rest of the games for mm. the season. But I think so do City. I think the problem is so, City are just yeah. so good. But it's going to annoy me because I, f- I actually feel like at this point it's just becoming a, a French league. Yeah. Mm. City just win everything. That's it's the thing. You don't look back and think, oh, yeah, but we were pushed out that season. You just see five or six whatever in a row. Paddy McGill said in the comments, City treble incoming again. Villa in the oh, box. Oh, my word. Oh, oh it was nearly 3-0 to Aston Villa. That would have been humiliating. I, w- I would like to point out, though, we're 2-0 down right now. That's a third of the goals we've conceded in 2024. Mm-hmm. And that, it is against a good a team. Aston Villa are a good team. But, oh yeah, that's a fantastic team. I think team. Liverpool are more out of it than us. Um, losing 1-0 to Palace yeah. is far worse than losing 2-0 Villa. True, but Liverpool at the same time, I feel like their, their run has been a little bit false. I think their oh, squad's not as good as yours at the minute. Yeah, Salah's. I think the pro- Liverpool Salah has not been good for the last like five or six games since the last injury he had. So when he's not good, they're not good. The youngsters kept it up for a couple of games, and obviously, obviously they won that cup, and it was viewed so amazingly because no one actually expected them to do it. And then I think now they've actually started dropping off a little bit. Trent came back on today, um, but he's still clearly not a hundred percent fit. Otherwise, he'd be starting. Mm. I just think Liverpool. It was a bit false that they were there in the first place. Um, and I know that they should be, again, with the amount they've spent and the squad they've built over the years. But I feel like their project is coming to an end. Yeah. Like, Salah's probably going to leave in the summer. As you said, they lost Mane and Firmino, who were fantastic for them. Van Dyke's still, like, of a good what, what, what's, age. What's the difference between the Liverpool project, the wise Liverpool project? Because they spent 40, 40 million on Alisson, 80 million on Van Dyke, 30 million on Salah. Mm. Well, they've no, the, spent money the question, yeah but they actually won the Champions League and the league yeah so they've won a Premier League and a Champions League and so that's uh, what I'm saying now it's up. getting to the point for me where Arsenal have to do that for it to be successful and for the because pr- at the minute it's not really a project if you don't actually get all out of it it's just like a, you've spent a lot well, of just spending a lot of money they won the Champions League after four years of Klopp being there Arteta's been there three years so it is like I said yeah. it is next season okay that. I think that's fair and I think that's an unbiased view to take. I respect yeah. it. Like I'm, I'm not arguing with you on that point. Yeah. Would I sack Arteta though? I no, I'm not, I'm not no, saying sacking, but it's a case of at what point do you consider it a success? And like, I think for me and Joe, knowing Arsenal and yeah. what what they should be doing, mm. like you like you touched on, like you know, this is this is massive. For you. Like, oh wow, come second in league. Whereas for me, it's like, well, yeah, you should. You're Arsenal. You should be. In, you should be no. Like it blows my mind. It blew my mind for years seeing Arsenal in like sixth, seventh, yeah. not even in Champions League. Yeah, it is. It was a little bit wild for a period. The Dunier, I think, are defending really well. Villa. 
Yeah, that's definitely it now, isn't it? There's nothing. There's nothing that actually makes me more annoyed than just being two 0 down in like six minutes and the Ketty is up top. <laughs> he's, he's, just fills you with he's no confidence. Useless. Does it change? Because of like your goals are fairly chipped in. There's no one focal point. Does it change Arteta's dynamics as a team if we bring in like you know, like a Tony or like a focal point? No, because I think a Watkins will play the exact same as Jesus does, but be able to put it in the back of net. Have a better Jesus output. should have 15, 20 goals. Every season. time I've seen like Arsenal play, you do think, you see it, like Jesus with a chance and you think, oh, fuck. Like, if, what, if, you, if, if, like? if you base it on expected goals, I don't know what the stats are, but I'm definitely exaggerating here. But if I watch him and go like, you should have scored that, that I do that at least 15, 20 times a season. Mm. So he should be getting at least 15, 20 goals a season. Well, Watkins will do score that again, and score. Though. So Watkins will do the exact same thing as Jesus in bringing other people in. Same with Tony because he's, he's got a good pass on him. The only difference is they'll actually score what Jesus can't. They'll get the hard opportunities in the back of the net. Yeah, yeah well, I don't disagree. I think Arsenal are realistically a, a top quality striker away from oh, that. Pass. Nice ball. Awful yeah. touch. Yeah. So well, uh, to be fair, at least you got that prime hydrate sponsorship money coming <laughs> in, so you can get, so you can get some better players in. Yeah. It's switched over now, I think. But there's literally like twelve different sponsors running down the side of the Arsenal pitch. Do you think wow, they yeah. just give them like a, a ten minute slot at the end of the match? You've got Betway, Persil, Hotels. dot com, Adidas, TCL, MG. Is that like a car yeah. company? Yeah. And Aston Villa are through again. Over the time now, it doesn't look like they're even going to try a score here. They're just going to run it to the corner flag. Time's up anyway, isn't it? But you, yeah. Like you said in the first half, who were you, um, that had that shot save from Martinez? Was it? Oh, oh, Trossard, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Trossard. That, they're the moments in games. It's got to go in that, yeah. hasn't it? I know that it was a good save. The full dynamic of it the was a good save, but yeah. also he did kick it in the middle of the net. Yeah, two thirds of the net yeah, is open. He, he could have scored, um, and that is the thing that makes a difference. But it's been a pretty good game weirdly obviously all the goals come in the last 10-15 minutes but overall it's been an entertaining fixture to watch I wouldn't um, have thought Villa good though, win at half time I think I think this wins us Bayern Munich though do you think all concentration us, goes this, on that this now? will give us a bit of a fight What's, a bit of do you get City in the semi-finals City yes. or Madrid I think Madrid will beat City you know well it's 3-3 three, it was three, three. Mm. Was there, but the Bernabeu yeah, it's had. Uh, Bernabeu Bernabeu okay I don't know I'm hoping the return will be at Etihad, won't it? Yeah, yeah. next fixtures at yeah. Etihad. And like I said, I said this on the. Podcast. I'd love to see it. To be fair, like, cause I do think I don't think I think it will be Arsenal or City that win league. Just I don't think they'll pull. I, I, like, I want to see that Arsenal. City I'd rather I want league, just for Arsenal City in league, Arsenal City in Champions League. Yeah. Like, I would start that new the new that little yeah. rivalry I mentioned. Personally, I'd pick Arsenal to win both. I actually like yeah. Arsenal. I hope this they win both. This is the thing. I think it's either... This is... Someone's getting the double. It's either Arsenal getting the double or Man City getting the double. Oh, no. Barcelona. Arsenal are getting double. Barcelona are winning the Champions <laughs> oh, League. Not for me. Yeah. It's happening. Oh, you think? Yeah, they've got an easy run to the final. They they beat PSG the other day. They'll beat them again and get through. They only w- were winning by one goal, but it was away. So they've got more away goals. They'll beat them and then they face Atletico Madrid, who they beat 3 0 in the league the other week, or Dortmund in the semi final. I think the final will be a Flaco Man City. I said that on the podcast. I think nah, it's a Flaco Man City. Barcelona beat them 3 0 in the week, league like two weeks ago. If they yeah, get through means... to the semi final, they'll definitely beat them. And then I just think once they're in the final, Xavi's, it'll be practically Xavi's last game in charge. They're going to end up winning it, I'm telling you. Do you reckon Xavi stays if he wins the... I don't think so, no. I think he just takes his leave. Smart. I think maybe he comes back in a couple of years. wonder where he goes. Liverpool? I don't know if anyone would really Mm. want him, weirdly, because I know he's done quite well to get him to the Champions League where they are, and they're still kind of challenging for the league, but I don't know. It's weird. I don't know who'd want him. I think he might want a bit of time off because I think the, the setup at Barcelona and how much... The concentration has gone towards money with like the Spotify deal and stuff. I don't think he likes that aspect of the club because it didn't used to be like that. Yeah. They didn't need to do that back in the day. So I think he might want to just take a bit of a break. It knows me most because Watkins is an Arsenal fan. Is it? He's a, is massive, it? He's a massive Arsenal fan. Well, lads, Theo, what's your thoughts? Final thoughts on the game? Trust the process. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, thanks for joining though. Um, yeah, I'll see you again soon. Tim, end the stream. <laughs>